That's it. All right, I'd like to call to meeting in order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, everyone. All right, next item on the agenda is the approval of agenda for tonight's meeting. I move uh, that we amend the agenda for tonight's meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor of amending the agenda? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, okay, uh, first thing I'm going to do is there is a motion to uh, address the request by Worcester County to look at the uh, public library for the treasury operations. We are removing that. Uh, I attended the a commissioner's meeting yesterday, and they passed a motion uh, to uh, continue to use the Isle of Wight uh, as their location for treasury operations, and they are withdrawing their request to use the Ocean Pines Library. So we're going to remove this item from tonight's agenda. Any other changes to the agenda? Steve? Yeah, I'd like to add for uh, the Elections Committee, another uh, person to be appointed to that committee, uh, Carol Ludwig. The first term? Uh, I believe it is, yes. Okay, I will add that into the appointments section of the agenda. Any other requested changes to tonight's agenda? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the the amended agenda for tonight's meeting. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Recorded unanimous. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from our January 4th meeting. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of approval of the minutes from our January 4th meeting. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item on the agenda is president's remarks. A couple of things. Um, one thing that we'll follow up on here in the near future based on the law that the county passed that went into effect on uh, January 1st, and that has to do with short-term rentals. Uh, there are now some stipulations with regard to registering the property with the county as a rental. And beyond that, the ability to enforce some of the restrictions they have put and some of the requirements that they have put in order to register that property for or as a, a rental property. Uh, we'll have some open dialogue with the county right now. We'll coattail off of what they're doing, but they're also looking to partner with us and try and make sure that we're very consistent in how we address and identify rental properties and enforce the law that they pass regarding the use of the rental properties. Uh, the second thing I wanted to follow up, uh, I wanted to point out some congratulations that are in order. Uh, again, at the meeting, at the commissioner's meeting on Tuesday, uh, there was a presentation uh, that was submitted by a team of folks that did a lot of work uh, to um, uh, apply for a grant uh, to the state for, um, uh, for drainage. So I'd like to point out three people that did yeoman's work uh, above and beyond the call of duty to make this forward. And by the way, uh, the county will present that, uh, that uh, application for the grant on our behalf, and uh, you'll hear more about that in detail uh, later in tonight's meeting. But I wanted to point out the work that Colby Phillips has done in leading that team and coordinating all the efforts, contacting the people uh, at the county, at the state, uh, at the Maryland Coastal Bays, and all the other entities that were involved in gathering the information to help prepare that application. So Colby, kudos to you. Uh, another person I wanted to point out is uh, Rich Polk uh, from Vista Engineering. You know, Rich's guidance and his understanding of drainage issues, the engineering aspects that go along with the drainage, his input was invaluable and helped us present a very well thought out uh, proposal and the last uh, individual is, I don't know if you know, uh, Bob Mitchell, who is the Director of Environmental Programs uh, at uh, Worcester County. He was also instrumental in helping that group get together and presenting. As a matter of fact, he's the one that spoke to the commissioners at the meeting to present uh, the application for that grant. So those three folks and many others, and, and forgive me if I left the other folks out, but those three folks should be recognized for their efforts. And I'd like to give them a round of applause for you know, what they've done. That's it for President's remarks. Uh, next item on the agenda is announcements of email votes. Colette? Yes, we had um, unanimous agreement to vote on two items through email. 
Uh, the first motion is the topic is to vote to approve spending request for golf pro shop display and counters. That was submitted by me, seconded by Larry Perrone, and it was to approve, approve the bid by Bauer International for golf pro shop display, furniture, counters, etc. And this was to authorize the ordering of the furniture and display elements needed um, for the new pro shop in time for it to be installed for the targeted opening date of May 1, 2020. And that uh, motion was unanimously approved. The second email vote um, oops, was um, submitted by Tom Janicek, seconded by Steve Tuttle. That was to approve golf memberships for non-residents at 10% above resident rates. The proposed fee change is designed to solicit interest from non-residents in joining the Ocean Pines Golf Club as a member. Um, and that um, motion was also um, unanimously approved. Thank you, Glett. Next item on the agenda is the 2021 uh, budget hearing. I'm going to ask to waive Robert's rules of order. Everybody okay with that? Yep. So the way this is, is uh, the floor is now open for anyone who wants to ask questions, enter into any kind of discussions on all and any items that are associated with the recommended budget. That's where we're, all right, so, that, so again, just to remind people, we had a proposed budget from the, from the GM that's gone through uh, budget finance. Uh, there were some refinements made. Uh, the GM has made those refinements, and now that budget was sent to the board for board review. We held that meeting back in the January 15th, 16th, 17th. Uh, so now it's at the proposed status, and it's been published on the website. So we want to encourage open dialogue, any questions that may come up that has anything to do with the budget. We're here to answer your questions. We're here to take any additional suggestions that may come up. So I would encourage people to have anything that they'd love to share with the board or any questions they want to ask, please do so. The floor is open. And uh, I'd like to, if you don't mind, if we could treat it as public comments, just uh, uh, state your name and your address and uh, for the record, and then we can make sure we you know, answer any questions or address any issues that you may have. So. Doris Lloyd, 65 Wood Duck Drive. Um, I have questions about has the bulkhead Budget been increased. Uh, you want to you want to uh, answer them one at a time, or do you want to ask a bunch of them? And we'll ask them. Well, all right. I mean, your 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 preference. I don't I don't care. Either, okay, you want to do I'll, one at a time? Okay. All right. Um, so the the bulkhead budget. So, uh, John, I'll turn to you, and I would I would kind of preface it with the amount we plan yes to spend. Yes. Yes. It has been increased. increased. <laughs> My question is, the lot assessment this year has been decreased to 986. <clears throat> the budget for waterfront people was to add $450. Now, has that been increased? What did we have? What did we have it last year, Johns? In the paper, it was stated, and I don't, I think it's wrong. I hope yeah. it's wrong. So the so Doris is correct. So the, the budget, the assessment, the regular assessment stayed at 986. For the bulkheads went from 450, 465, it was increased $50 to 550. And we've, we've, we've mentioned that numerous times, yes. So it, there was a $50 increase for the, for the bulkheads for the waterfront assessment, yes. How come? So- Price. The, the cost to do bulkheads has gone up substantially. I realize that, but and they have $2 million in that budget. So, and you're right, there was, because work hadn't been done over the last couple of years, uh, the bulkhead team has, and we've reported this all, all, all year, the bulkhead team has stepped up. We increased our allocation of resource there with Colby, and we're eating into that balance. So there still is a balance there, but we took that into account also. We're raising it, but there's there's a work plan for everything, and there will not be a big balance in there. Um, so the bottom line on what you're saying is we're eating it to that balance with all the work we're doing, catching up. John, can I add something to sure. this? Sure. Um, since I I keep a close eye on our reserves, and, and you're right, Doris, um, we are anticipating 
or as of uh, April 30th, 2019, our bulkhead reserve had a, about two and a half million dollars in it. Okay. With the work that has been done this year, we're, and what the work we're anticipating right. doing next year, the budget, the uh, balance will be at about six hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars. The cost of uh, the materials has gone way up, um, and you know, full transparency here, for because we did have this large amount of money, we stopped the nineteen dollar a month uh, uh, bulkhead charge on the assessments for the last two years. That's going back into place, and we are increasing the bulkhead, the lot owner's bulkhead uh, assessment this year, and it's probably going to be increased for the next two years. Well, I like to tell him my story. Sure. Right now, I'm having my bulkhead in, uh, fixed, right. and it is a lot of expense and a lot of money and a lot of people working on it. I've been here 32 years. I've put in $14,000 into that bulkhead. When they get finished, I have to replace the electricity, the water, and water coming from my crawl space, which will be more than $1,000 that they will not cover. So I think you should think about that a little bit. I'd rather pay my own bulkhead than have you take care of it. Thank you. That's a lot of money yes, that I put in there, and I'm not getting out. And I and I have a I have a bulkhead lot too, and when mine comes due, I'm going to have the same issue. But you haven't been here 32 years. 37 <laughs> years. <Okay. laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Doris. All right, Good. real quick, if I Good. could, Cole, um, what's the what is now the f per foot bulkhead replacement cost compared? Do you remember? It's like. Three hundred and some hundred, because I think if you remember, if you if you, what you quoted uh, right. was was twenty seven on the average lot in Ocean Pines, it cost twenty seven thousand dollars to replace a bulkhead in Ocean. Now I'm on the bulkhead lot too, and I've been here as long as you have. So I, I, we were both in the same boat on this, but the cost has gone up so substantially in the last five years that it's just it's it's hard to recoup. It's going to go away faster than we're putting it in. I, it, I have one other comment. It's costing a lot of money. Five years, you're going to have to raise it, uh, and it will cost a lot more. It's kind of foolish just to put it out and not raise it. Any comment? No, and Doris is right, and Larry and everything, and we've said this, and we do anticipate it going up each year. Um, it's well over, it's 375. Uh, years ago, it was two something, but the increase in the cost of the material, the labor, and everything else, the price of a regular bulkhead is way more than 14,000 tons, right? So, um, you know, we, we, we have work plans. Colby, Eddie, Nobi have work plans for it for everything we're doing. And uh, that balance that was there is being used. And we and also need money for emergency. And one, uh, one other issue, too. Uh, the, uh, we didn't increase the bulkhead assessment for everyone this year because the last two years we had uh, the abatement basically. Next year that number uh, will probably go up also. Correct. We have estimates going out for three, four, five years. Yeah, I guess while we're on the topic, it looks like we're not forming a line to get up here, so let's make sure we, we touch this. John, there was a very interesting statistic I think Colby presented it about uh, the investment in the um, uh, in the bulkhead would last uh, the, the six, it would be sixty years before you paid it back, and then if we increased it, it's fifty five years, which both outlive the useful life of the bulkhead. Yeah. So you're actually yep. in the negative. I thought it was a very interesting statistic that maybe we should share yeah, with yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, with the membership. Um, good evening. So when we were working on the bulkheads, as was explained earlier, we have spent almost, we're going to be spending projected at the end of the year close to um, $2 million on bulkheads. And a lot of that is near Wood Duck, where you are, Miss Dolores, which has been damaged since Hurricane Sandy. So we're trying to get a jump start on that. But statistically, it, it averages about $30,000 a lot for your bulkhead. 
um, with the annual bulkhead waterfront assessment at 465, where it, where it has been, it would take 61 years for the homeowner to pay for the cost of their bulkhead. So with bringing it up to 515, it brings us down to 55 years. Now the good news is that with the wood, the length of the wood bulkhead, with the wooden bulkhead, it's about 25 to 30 years before it has to be replaced. We're going to vinyl, which gives us about a 50 year. So we are trying to improve it even though it's going up so it lasts longer. So Thanks, Colby. All right, any other questions on bulkheads? Please. All right, any other questions on budget? <clears throat> Good evening. <clears throat> Richard Marquez, Yellow 3B Mallard Drive East. And uh, basically what I'm here to talk about and ask questions about is the waterfront differential. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, Mr. Parks remembers our meeting in June concerning the matter. Um, the waterfront differential has nothing to do with bulkheads. It is a $90 fee collected from every waterfront lot for canal maintenance and dredging. Um, the 1,600 waterfront lots are assessed about $145,000 a year. And although the amount of the assessment has changed, they've been assessed for at least 20 years, perhaps longer. Um, canal dredging has not occurred in the last five years during which 145,000 has been collected each year. The backup in canal dredging amounts to about $60,000 or 12,000 worth of dredging per year. Uh, in comparison, once again, to the collection of $145,000 a year. A meeting was held in June, a very productive meeting, and I have here the Ocean Pines progress report of that meeting based upon an OPA press release. It is a very good summary of what occurred. <coughs> Could I ask you to pass that? Sure. Um, and rather than uh, go over everything that occurred in that meeting, the main thing was it was determined that uh, uh, OPA would find out how much had been collected in the waterfront differential. OPA would then determine how much had been properly spent on those items the waterfront differential was meant to cover, and subtracting one from the other, find out what remained as a reserve in the waterfront differential. Um, that meeting was to be followed up with a second meeting, whereby once we had that reserve number, it would be determined if there should be a change in the amount of the waterfront differential or whether it should be suspended for a period of time. That second meeting never occurred. And to the best of my knowledge, the number showing how much is in reserve in the waterfront differential has never been determined. Those funds have been mingled in the dredge fund account, even though, I'm sorry, the bulkhead fund account even though they have nothing to do with bulkheads. Um, when I, I did miss one meeting due to a health problem and apologized profusely, I was told by Colby Phillips it would be reset right after the holidays. It never occurred despite my attempts to reset it. Instead, I received a letter with a hypothetical that the Army Corps of Engineers prophesized that if we were directly hit with a major hurricane, that to redredge all the canals could cost up to a million dollars. If we are hit by a major hurricane, the last thing we're going to have to worry about is redredging the canals. Um, also, uh, I assume that statement was made so that funds could be continued to be collected and added to the waterfront differential reserve. Um, also cited was a resolution that basically is gobbledygook. And as a lawyer, I know gobbledygook when I see it. Um, the interpretation was that my $90 could go to building bulkheads in other parts of Ocean Pines, even though I paid for my own bulkhead. 
That was never the intent of the waterfront differential, and in fact may contravene a contract with Marvin Steen, whereby his <coughs> subdivisions uh, are not allowed to, or, or Ocean Pines is not permitted to build them for any fees dealing with bulkheads, since they provide their own. I have broached this matter beginning in, nine, in 2017, and if I may approach you, just a copy. This is a post letter, and um, I have done so as a member of both of the Ocean Pines Boat Club, since many of our members live on the water, and personally. Um, I finally felt something was being done after that June meeting. It was a very productive meeting where everyone agreed as to what had to be done, not what the final conclusion would be, but the process to reach that conclusion. That has not occurred. Um, it is time that the waterfront bulkhead be revisited and not automatically set at $90 every year, as it has been once again this year. Um, I have lived on my property for over 20 years and have paid about $2,000 in the waterfront differential. I have never seen a dredge in my canal, and I don't believe very many people have. This fee is just being collected out of rote. Thank you for your consideration. Well, a couple of things. Number one, I think uh, we owe you a follow-up because I was at that June meeting. And you're right. It was a very productive meeting. And I guess perhaps since I sit in this chair, I'll have to take the blame for not following up properly. So I think one of the action items is let's revisit what we had discussed. I'm going to make a recommendation. Let's revisit what we discussed at the June meeting. And let's figure out how that factors into any suggestions on changing the, and I'm not promising we're changing, we'll just discuss if there's any options to change or affect that $90. Does that sound reasonable? And am I, do, yeah, are I mean, we okay I, with that approach? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about something, and first of all, it's excellent, and Mr. Masquiel, I know um, we did try to schedule a meeting, you're right, there was a meeting, there were people there, whether it was health reasons or whatever. Um, I can't tell you what happened for 20 years uh, the money was com commingled with bulkheads, like I told you back then. That money's been utilized. I think what I'm hearing here, and I'm fine with if that's what the board's saying also, and you're, is that we no longer want to pay the $90 or whatever. I mean, you know, the dredging, we're doing dredging now. Uh, we have plans for it. Whatever happened in the last five years, I don't know. I wasn't here. Um, Kobe made every effort to get the information, set up the meetings. But if, Doug, if that's what everybody's saying, that you want us to address whether or not to have this $90 anymore, I mean, that's a little different. Well, um, uh, you know, my knee-jerk reaction is we, we probably need some more information, all right? I mean, we've presented a compelling case that money's been, I, I think, it, and I'm going to paraphrase here, so correct me if I'm wrong. Money got taken in. We know there's a sum of money in there. And what we haven't seen is any expenses against that money that translates into dredging and or maintenance that were done on the canals. Well, that, Way to kind of summarize so can it? I just and then yeah, Larry, I just, I'm, just, I'm just throwing did, it out there you know, for consumption. We did go through it. We brought in people that have worked on bulkheads for over the 15, 20 years. Gene Ringsoff was one. We went back and saw what was published, where this money was utilized for, and it was several different things, whether it was signage, uh, many different things that has been communicated to the association over the last 20 years. Um, that was out there. Now, based upon the way we accounted all those years, it was all commingled in there. So I gotta be honest with you, if you want me to do something, I will do whatever. It, the bottom line is this, do we wanna pay the $90 anymore or not? I mean, to go through the detail of that, first of all, we can't go back and do it. We can't, I can't give an accounting. If somebody else can, that's fine. We tried to do it, we looked at it, we talked about that in June. My understanding was we would decide whether or not to continue the $90 going forward. But to get that kind of detail, if anybody else can get that detail, you can't get it. So if you're going to task me to go back or task us to go back, I'm being honest. If we could have, we would have done it. So I really comes down to this. With all due respect to everybody, the question is, the way I see it, and there's nothing wrong with uh, 
what I'm asking is that whether or not we, we continue to pay the $90 or assess it. And, and I'm open to that. I mean, we're showing you all the cost of the bulkheads. We went back and checked what was communicated to the association over to the years and what it was for. And we can certainly pull it out again. I'm sure Kobe has it. And then that's it. I, I, honestly, I don't know what else outside of if you want to suspend it or, or not do it anymore. So um, outside you know, of that, I can't do what you're asking me to do. All right. So I need input from my colleagues here. Well, <clears throat> Mr. Marcial, I was at the meeting also. And, you know, I understand you don't want to pay the ninety dollars. But let me let me give you what has happened. I, I am not I uh, well, would like to know what is happening. Let me let me let me explain what has gone on and a letter or a note received by this board over the last 24 hours. As you know, we had a fire almost a year ago, I guess, over in the condominiums in by the Yacht Club. We, we, I, and actually I spoke to one of the homeowners uh, this, uh, this afternoon. There, the, associ the homeowners association over there did not collect enough money in their association dues to purchase sufficient amount of insurance to provide coverage for the building that burnt. Now, eight homeowners, condo owners in that building are being assessed $450,000 so that they can do the repair work in addition to what was there from the insurance company. Your comment that if we have a major storm here, I suspect you'll be the first one up here saying, why aren't my waterways dredged? We have that responsibility. This board and every other board has a responsibility to make sure the money is there, that if, God forbid, that happens, we can get it done. So my position would be that, <clears throat> no, we should, not, uh, we should not abate the $90 that you're paying. It's, if, if there is an incident, and who knows, and I hope to God there isn't, people are going to be standing right in front of this board or whatever board is there saying why you need to pay to dredge our waterways. And guess what? They would be right. And we need to have the money to do it. The amount of $1 million is pure conjecture. Can you imagine a storm with I don't care such what the number is. Uh, that it would silt in the canals to a $1 million? They'd have to get cranes in to get the houses out of the canals that floated I, I in would, before they drank. I imagine, I imagine the homeowners that own these condos were saying, can you imagine what would have to happen for this whole building to be destroyed where we have to pay $450,000? I'm sorry, I don't accept that. I'm that not logic. saying we should eliminate the fee. I'm saying we should find out how much we currently have in reserve and then make a determination whether the fee needs to be modified or even suspended our, for a period of our time. Our bulkhead and what I gave you those, that information when Mrs. Lloyd spoke, we, at the beginning of the year, we had about $2.5 million. At the end of next year, we'll have $338,000. We do not have it segregated as you would like. And as John just said, to go back and do it, it's an impossible task. That's hard to believe that a, a no accounting has been made of expenditures for that fund for uh, dredging and for signage in the canals. You can't segregate those out from bulkhead fees. That is very difficult for me to understand, considering we just had an audit that cost, uh, what, $100,000? And um, it, what type of, uh, certainly you can go back five to 10 years. You may not be able to go back 20 and get an idea of what is in that fund. You're collecting 145,000 a year. For five years, you've spent zero. No dredging. So, John, I, listening to this discussion, um, I wonder, 
I guess the question comes to my mind is if we decided, we, whoever we is, the board, the, you know, the operational side, the membership decided that we wanted to dredge, that a condition came up and we had to dredge a certain canal. Where, how would we pay for it? In other words, what fund would it come out? Because right now, I think, it's bulky, when I understand, bulky, right, it's bulky. commingled. It's so commingled. the idea that if we had to do some dredging, the money is there. Now, to John's point, do we know that, you know, this this much of it has been devoted to dredging and this much of it is devoted to um, bulkheads? No, it's all commingled. It's been commingled for a very, very long time. So I wonder if it's reasonable to say that if any dredging had to be done, it's going to come out of that bulkhead fund, which would in turn kind of substantiate the fact that what you paid into it for dredging is actually being expensed out of that fund. But you know exactly what's going in every year. That is not an unknown number. And mm. you certainly, I could think, would deter could determine how much dredging has been paid for. It may be a totally different firm than the firm doing bulkhead work. We have done dredging at individual lot owners' homes, and the money to do that comes out of this account, too. Oh, I realize that. Well, that's all I'm part of this, Mr. Marciello. What I'm saying no. is you can uh, segregate the funds you spend We're not going on. to segregate. It's all, it's co So, let me just add, it's, it's, And also it means that you have a contract with Marvin Steen when he put in his own bulkheads. That contract states that those lots shall not be charged a bulkhead fee and they shall maintain their own. You are then charging me a bulkhead fee. Okay, so I'll tell myself, I'm not aware of that agreement. John, I think one of the things we have, and, and Michelle, we have a, um, a homework item, and that is to go and reference that agreement from Steen to make sure it is still in force. And if we have to make any adjustments associated with that, we do so. So that's news okay. to me, and I appreciate it. So let's go. So I want to – hold on. We got, we got so, Colette. Can I, can I just – we, yeah, we just can add this, and Colby can jump into, or Steve, or whatever. But we can't just go in there and arbitrarily dredge and dredge the whole place. There has to be a plan. There has to be – Army Corps of Engineers involved. It has to be reviewed and approved. You can't just go in there. And Kobe, they've set up a plan. We have it now in place. Whatever happened or didn't happen for several years before, dredging is happening now. Um, that $90 also doesn't just go towards dredging. There's numerous, I don't have them all on me right now. We're just talking about it now, but it was brought up in the meetings. It goes towards buoys, lights. There's a lot of other stuff that has gone on signs, uh, that's the best that we have. Now, going forward, if you want to break out dredging as a separate fund or whatever, then certainly what is being asked of us and everybody today, that's something I can see. And that's something I've brought up even in these meetings. <coughs> to go back, I, I, I got to be honest with you. I, 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 don't, I don't think it's appropriate you. to go back, but I, I think I, it's- I could recommend that going I, I would, forward is that we break that out approach. dredging separately yeah. and then monitor so, let me go so, Colette, Colette and, yes. then, and then Tom and then Frank. So I think um, all these points are very valid points. It's clear we can't undone, undo what has been done, right? Okay. So, but I do hear that the board is in favor of looking at how to do things right going forward. We are not going to solve that problem tonight, but definitely these, these conversations are going to continue and we are going to work something out and we will let the membership know what is determined to be the best way to account for the things that are spent, that these $90 go toward separately from bulkheads. Um, Certainly it would seem uh, prudent to remove that $90 from this day forth from the bulkhead fund and establish a separate fund beginning with the 2020 assessment. Um, I mean, I, we could start dredging in six months when the, when the Army Corps of Engineers said start dredging, and we could use up your whole $145,000 in one year just there dredging. There are only $60,000 in applications pending. Well, that's I know. It. That's my point. We haven't had any. There's been none. It's just been spot dredging every time we've done bulkheads. I mean, I know. I'm on the water. I have friends on the water. Every time somebody does a bulkhead, you do spot dredging with the bulkheads just to get in, people in and out of their new slip, which is not the... 
which is, well, they did on everyone I've seen in the last five years. But my point is this, you're absolutely right. If we're going to do dredging, for instance, we have the canal coming out of the out of the um, boat ramp down off of Beauchamp that people have talked about. We need dredging on that. They came forward. I know that's going out as an application to be dredged. And we'll just get started. As, it, as it's being done, we could actually, we could actually to show the progress of dredging as a separate, not necessarily separate line item, but it's a different price to dredge than it is to put in a bulk in. So there's no reason why we can't show that money as a separate item than bulk heading. So everybody knows that their $90 isn't gone just towards someone else's bulk head, right. any mine or, or anyone Why else's. Why can't it just be a separate fund? It can be. It can, I mean, it could sit there sideways, but, but you know, it, it can. I mean, but we, we have to, we're just now getting into the process of starting to redredge, which we haven't done in forever. And it does take a while to get the Army Corps of Engineers involved and get the permits, as you know. So I don't I don't disagree with that at all. So I'm not going, disagreeing. going forward, I, I I don't foresee as long as we can figure out right. a way to do it in accounting purposes. Right. Then there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to do that. Yes. And what we're doing this year, we should be able to take the be able to show how much money we spent in dredging this year if we have dredging contracts that are coming Correct. up. And so we, we can do that. Show exactly what you're receiving. Yep, exactly. I can do this. Absolutely. Yes. And well, he's segregate gonna those funds from I agree the bulkhead funds. Absolutely, I agree um, with. You. Yeah. Okay. No, that's well, a good yeah. takeaway. I, yeah. I, this yeah, is what I said. A, this is what is we can do. We'll break it out. Uh, and like I said, it's not just dredging. Kobe's team has plans on the dredging. We can show it. We can show it going against it, whether it's a separate line item or a separate fund. We can do that. That I can do. That's what I recommended. And yes, absolutely. Thank you. Liz. Okay. Yeah, I think there are a number of good points that have been pointed out. First, I think just to be absolutely honest, it's inexcusable that we haven't done dredging, which is legacy of the past. It's inexcusable that the funds are commingled and you can't go. That's an accounting issue of the past. And, you know, it, it just exists that way. I think what I would like to recommend to the board is that the GM put together a work group to look at the whole issue because... I want to go with your last sentence here. Hopefully these amounts have not become part of the association's general funds or sort of a luxury tax or penalty for waterfront lot owners. The first meeting I sat down as a board member, I was informed that 92% of the bulkheads in Ocean Pines are privately owned. The cost of maintaining those bulkheads are split 60-40 between waterfront and non-waterfront lot owners. So your sentence applies to every non-waterfront lot owner in Ocean Pines. Now, I'm not saying what we do is wrong, but what I'm saying is when you ask about the split and when you ask about the allocation and how it's done, there's this mystery. Nobody knows. I think that that work group should reset something for all of our 8,452 lot owners that says this is the split, how we pay for it, and why we pay for it. I've heard the rationale. I'm just not so sure that it flies and passes all the tests that it has to. Yeah. Start treasury. Yeah, that's all. We'll start treasury. Right, right. So we'll break it out. I'll set up the work group. Um, one thing I can look, and I wasn't here for 20 years. I, I doubt highly it was used for the general fund. I think it was co-mingled with bulkheads and whatever. Um, not sure how much went for dredging over the years of what they did, but I can tell you this. I doubt highly it was used for the general fund, but. Yeah, I, 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 are we going forward? We can do this. That's what I absolutely. Yeah, I I, think I, that's something I can do. I, I can get this a, work group really go, going. The gentleman could be a part of it if he likes. Absolutely. And I defer to the accounts whether or not you have to have a separate fund or you can report on expense categories. You know, meaning I'm pulling out of this it, pool it, of funds. Me, I would have a separate yeah. fund. I'd also break right. out the drainage from roads, but I've been bringing that up. So, okay. All right. I never said that the fund should be eliminated or no. that I am unwilling yeah. to pay it. Right, point taken. I no. just want to make sure yeah. I'm not paying for someone yeah. else's bulk. And right, and it's an accounting owe, issue for... When I pay for my own out of pocket. Thank Understood, you. and okay. appreciate the input. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion items on the budget? Sir. I'd just like to mention that uh, in Section 10 of Ocean Pines, there's 1,297... Name, name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Harry Rogers, 60 Donning Ham Lane. Thanks. There's 1,297 lots in Section 10 Ocean Pines. There's six waterfront lots. They don't have bulkheads. They're non-bulkhead waterfront lots. 
There are no bulkheads, to my knowledge, not one bulkhead in all of Section 10. We still pay the, it was $19 last year, I don't know, $23 this year or what it is, for bulkheads. They don't do us any good. The, um, the bulkheads, as, as uh, Frank just mentioned, it's like a 60-40 split. So we're also paying 40% of the cost of those bulkheads. And we don't even have any bulkheads. We don't have any waterfront, six waterfront lots. So, you know, when this gentleman's up here complaining about $90, we're paying a hell of a lot more than that and don't get anything for it. Well, you have, we have community bulkheads throughout Ocean Ponds that all have to be maintained as well. That is what the, the non-waterfront property owners are paying their $17 for to maintain all the community bulkheads throughout Ocean Pines. If you go past Wood Duck right now, they're getting ready to do all of that bulkhead across the frontage right there on, on Ocean Parkway. But so, the only point I was making, I'm not arguing right. about paying for bulkhead. Right. My, my point is, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of discussion here tonight about how bulkhead property owners are getting the short end of the stick. They aren't. Okay, and that, that, that was my only point on that. I would like to make one more suggestion. Um, currently, the association mows the um, roadsides in front of the individual homes. My suggestion would be that the association uh, via bylaws change that to where every lot owner is responsible for the maintenance of the road frontage, and by road frontage, I mean the, the, the grass in front of their lot. Right now, the situation is many of us, probably most in here, maintain that themselves anyway. When the mowers come through, you know, they're using those great big mowers, and they make, in many cases, more of a mess than they actually do good. Plus, they can't get close to the, the driveways and that kind of thing. Plus, they only do on the pavement side of the ditch, okay? On almost every lot in here, there's at least five to 10 feet of pro ocean or association property right behind that ditch in front of, for example, in front of my house, right. okay? You don't maintain that at all. My point is, I, I don't see the sense in sending those mowers up and down the street when many of the people take care of it themselves and uh, those that don't, you know, hey, start. It's much easier to mow that property with a 22-inch push mower, and that's, you know, on the average place, it's 10 trips back and, or five trips back and forth to mow that. And it looks consistent with the, with the house. My main reason for suggesting this, yes, there's a budget savings, but uh, if the, and I was told a couple of years ago, the association attorney said that the board had the right under the DNRs to DRs. huh the DRs, not the DRs. DRs, DNRs, covenants is what they really are. <laughs> okay, but I'm told not to call them covenants. Uh, under those regulations, mm -hmm. the associate, the board of directors has the right via bylaw to make that a requirement. Okay. Now the advantage to it is, yeah, there's some budget savings, but the big advantage is with this stuff with the uh, rentals. If I'm maintaining, if I'm told to maintain that ground in front of my house, okay, it's for my <laughs> private use, not private, but you know what I mean. It uh, just like the ball kids. The bulkhead behind your house is for your exclusive use. That's the term. Okay. That could be then for my exclusive use because I'm maintaining it. And if bylaws are written that way, then if, if there's a um, Airbnb next door to me that's parking 
20 cars in the street, they're in, they're in violation of the bylaws. In your meeting with the county, if you said to the county, we have a bylaw that says that property in front of his house, he maintains it, it's for his exclusive use. If then a Airbnb or whatever continues to have 10 cars and they're parking in front of other people's property, you call the county and you say, hey, they're in violation of our bylaws, take their license. And I guarantee you they'll stop parking all over the place. They'll limit the cars. And that's what I, you know, and, the, the, and understand, it doesn't bother me. I got plenty of parking on my place, and I don't care if they park on the street. But there are an awful lot of people in here that are upset about the yeah. fact that all these yeah. cars are there. There's a way to limit them. Yeah. Let me, so a couple, let me add one thing before I lose that train of thought. So with regard to the, with the grass, um, you know, I think in terms of operational practicality, it, it, the idea of while this situation applies to some, it might not apply to all. And we, we can't get, and I, and I always quote former director Pat Supic, who used to say, Doug, we have to make a decision that's in the interest of 8,452 people, not 112. So the idea that you, you, your argument makes sense, but the question would be, I would suspect that if someone said, hey, I really enjoy that there would be someone that says, I really, I'm really glad that Ocean Pines comes by and cuts the grass in front of my house, regardless of whether they can get to the real corner there next to the driveway. They're very appreciative of that. So I take that into consideration as well. So there's both sides of that argument. With regard to the parking, the Airbnb, that's under development. But you understand, too, that we also have sections in our DNR, our DRs that say, um, so you had me saying it now. Uh, <laughs> I'll stand corrected like anybody else. Um, that uh, we that you can't park a vehicle on the street. So again, uh, and then, then you talk about practical enforcement of those kinds of things. You know, do we do that? So that's an open area, and I think my my recommendation just for a discussion topic would be until the uh, county gives us more detail and more. Uh, you know, information regarding how they view enforcement of certain restrictions and guidelines that have, you know, that are part of that law that they passed that we sort of, you know, hold on until we, you know, get with them and really kind of coordinate our efforts so that we're singing off the same sheet of music. Well, but the major problem with the, the rental, the new county rental regulations is they don't discuss parking at all. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yes, they well, do. Yeah, so many cars right. per. Yeah. So, so many people per 50 square foot or something. No, that's in, that's that's when defining that's a bedroom. Rooms, yeah. yeah. But in the cars, do they say anything about having to have sufficient yes. parking? Yes. 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 Absolutely does. Yeah. It so absolutely new, does. New regulations. Absolutely. I'll go. So that must have been a change. Yeah. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. 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 No problem. All right. Any other comments? Frank, you want yeah. to? Yeah. Uh, Harry, bring a couple of good points, but there's something that um, – that we've run into and we run into continuously. And I, I think it applies generally to a lot of different topics, okay? Bulkheads, ditches, drainage. Um, the legal contract between the Ocean Pines Association and you as a homeowner is spelled out in the Declaration of Restrictions. And Jeff is an attorney and Richard's an attorney, so they can jump in and say anything that I say is wrong. In those declaration of restrictions, there are maintenance requirements that we adhere to. I looked at changing the declaration of restrictions. This is what it involves. There are 22 different sections in Ocean Pines, plus a couple of sections that has subsections. The change the DRs to do something very simple, we have to have every one, single one of those sections approve it by a simple majority. It's a it's a almost impossible task. The other thing I want to point out about Airbnbs, because I know Doug and I went down, and I think uh, Steve went down to the county commissioners meeting. Um, the and, and I guess I don't want to necessarily mischaracterize something, but I'll give you a flavor. The county commissioners basically said that the Airbnb phenomenon in the county is largely an Ocean Pines problem. The reason it's largely an Ocean Pines problem is we are the largest city in the county, but we're not a city. We're a homeowners association. So we're Berlin, Pocomoke, uh, Snow Hill, Ocean City can pass legislation and enforce it. We cannot. So what we need to do 
and, and the way that it gets the parking, whether you're aware of it or not, right now the county has a regulation that says you cannot stack park cars in a driveway. So I have two cars. When my kids come to visit and they park behind that, they are violating county law. Okay? It has never been enforced. And when you look at what happens around here in the summertime, parking is the last thing that I think anybody wants to address with new regulations. But what, what it comes down to with the Airbnbs <coughs> is the county is telling us, you tell us what you need to control the Airbnbs so that it doesn't destroy the flavor of your community and we'll work with you to create spot legislation. But they clearly put the ball in our court to come to them. They're not gonna solve the problem for us. As a matter of fact, one commissioner quite honestly looked out and said, I don't see any of my people here. It's not my problem. And on top of that, when we did meet before the county commissioners had their meeting, their comment was, there, there's no money for enforcement in the county. So the county is not going to enforce any of this. Well, but that was part of my, my reasoning. If, if we have, and uh, when John Bailey was manager, okay, he proposed in, in that year's budget, the one year he was here, that the um, mowing of that I was discussing be done away with. He said that our attorney said that that was perfectly legal within the existing DRs, okay? So if it is perfectly legal, even if you forget about the, the Airbnb parking mm -hmm. issue and all, since the majority of the people maintain that ground. And if you want to get technical, I can say, well, wait a minute. You know, if I don't have any advantage to using that ground, why am I taking care of half of it from the ditch up? In my place, I have mine, uh, my corner set. In my, my case, I'm taking care of six foot by 60 foot, less whatever the driveway width is, of association property. The association has never taken it. They've, actually, since I've lived there, I just mow the whole thing. You know, I mean, it's easier. But my point is, we, we can either technically say we're not mowing it, or, you know, then I can come back, and I won't, but I could come back and make the argument, well, you're only mowing half of mine. Mow the rest. And there is no way that you're going to get a lawnmower other than a push mower on the other side of that ditch. So if I'm correct and you can do that, why not do it? It's a saving. I, I think if you went out, you get a majority vote. You know, and I'm not saying you don't have to do a referendum. You guys... I, as I understand it, and according to what the attorney said a couple years ago, you guys have the right to create a bylaw that says I have to mow that ground. Okay. And then it becomes for my personal, my not personal use. <coughs> if you don't mind, it, we have enough, we have enough issues with people not maintaining their houses, their lawns, their the infrastructure. Oh. No. And so if I tell everybody they gotta mow their their get their their swale and get it all cleaned up, you are might be the exception. Everybody in this room might be the exception, might clean their own swale. I do. I clean it up, I mow all my grass, but not everybody, and it might not be a majority. It might be a minority of people that actually keep their grass cut. So then we're gonna have another stack this high of, of comp compliance issues that we have to send to our attorney to cut the grass next to the road. That would be my biggest problem with this whole issue is that little bit of grass. If those guys are going by anyway, people put don't cut the grass if they don't want them to cut the grass and they just go around it. Is the, most of the time they do it, the trash cans are on the side of the road anyway, so they don't cut mine anyhow. So I just don't think it's that few of, I, I think to, wow. to, it's just something that I don't think can be done. And, I, and, and parking regulations, they can't be enforced anyway on the sides of the road. Believe me, I've had many issues 
in my houses in Ocean Pines that that I've had to come before com the board and the chief of police and everything about well, people parking on my the on parking issue. You only have to have two tires off the road. Well, well either way, either well, way, we're going off something. Yeah, I, I was going to say we got we let's keep going. We're gonna, yeah, we yeah, we. Well, I, uh, hey, hey, that's just personal. Is it uh, since I waived Robert's rules of order, we can actually give more than five minutes. But I would just offer people to be respectful of everybody's time. OK, if we were under Robert's rules of order, you're absolutely right. But we waived it. And I just want to make sure we give everybody time this to, to, to provide their opinion. I know. So I'm, just, I'm just making sure yeah, everybody knew. I know. I know. OK, good. Thanks. <laughs> other other comments on the budget, questions, concerns. <laughs> Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is Bernie McGuire. I live at 11 Leslie Mews. Um, first of all, a comment. I just want to compliment the board and especially the GM and his staff for doing such a great job. In the 13 years I've been here, I think we're in the best shape of cooperation. And I know what it's like to put a budget together to, to line up the budget with the assessments or the, uh, the revenue growth other than the uh, bulkhead um, is, is, is a big task. My question is, how does the budget, I, I looked at the budget, compared to last year, but I didn't see any comparisons compared to a strategic plan, a long-term strategic plan. How does the budget compare to Ocean Pines long-term strategic plan? Good, very good question. Um, John First of all, it's an excellent question. Yeah. It's something being at for years and I was on there. We are trying, we, we don't have a strategic plan. We haven't had one. We are setting up one. We're actually talking about um, items to start doing it on and then the, the board is putting together a committee for that yeah one of the one of the we things we the mentioned already well good John. yeah yeah no. no one of the things we mentioned in a previous board meeting is the strategic planning committee which is an advisory committee to the board has been dormant for uh, several years uh director rogers no oh, by the way I, my, i'd be remiss if i didn't director rogers can't be here tonight she took very ill and couldn't even call in so mm -hmm. she sends her regards so please don't think that she uh just decided it, this, this meeting uh, wasn't worth it. She has a legitimate excuse. So uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier. But um, uh, uh, Director Rogers is, you know, kind of uh, actively trying to shepherd uh, getting um, members for that committee. Uh, and then and John has right. kind of been a support saying, hey, we really do need to start identifying items that are in the long term, bigger picture so that we can A, identify them, B, make sure that we have money in the reserves to, you know, address these, assuming it's not going to be a capital spend. Uh, and then, um, you know, really kind of make sure that we stay, we keep that budget in, in alignment with the strategic plan. That being said, there's still enough things that we do on a regular basis in Ocean Pines to maintain the environment. And we know have to, we have to budget for that. So absent of uh, a wish list item, I think we're in very good shape as far as, you know, uh, uh, driving the budget to meet the needs of what we have to do to run Ocean Pines. But your point is well taken. We should have a strategic plan. I, uh, I'm on the strategic planning committee. I got... Uh, thank got, you for putting me on. You got voluntold? You know, and, um, but we haven't met. You know, and it's, you know, and, and I, didn't, I didn't think there was one. You know, I looked the, on the site and everything like that, but I, I think it's something that we yep. should really uh, pursue. First of all, thank you for stepping up and, and, right. and volunteering. I think if you can uh, get with Director Rogers and, and myself, we'd be more than happy to discuss about how we can kind of really jumpstart that environment because there's a there's a, yeah. a groundswell of, uh, you know, desire here to get that thing back up and running because I agree with you. We should have that and it helps guide uh, you know, topics that would, would take, be taken under consideration, you know, for the long term. Great. So, thank you. Larry. Thank you. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> and thank you for getting, being on that committee. I know that's a, that's tough work to do. Um, but that sort of ties into um, the new capital reserve account that we established uh, this year. And the whole purpose of that account is, um, is to work for the budget finance committee and the board to work in conjunction with the strategic planning committee so that if the if the planning committee comes up with something that they feel they need to do and it's going to be a new capital item not a not something that we can finance out of our replacement reserves that we look at putting money aside for a particular item and save for it as opposed to deciding to uh to do something and then turn around and raise the assessment on everybody right away. And for this year, if you if you looked at the budget, one of the items that's in there, um, Colby has presented for the last few years uh, a request to build uh, about a 200 square foot addition to the uh, sports core. 
Um, and the cost of that's going to be somewhere between two and $300,000, rough numbers. So as part of this year's budget, in the new capital reserve fund, we tentatively, we have scheduled to put $100,000 aside for that project. Now, again, that new capital reserve fund, we're, it's not, you know, we're not anticipating at this point to use it for, um, you know, another large building. Um, it's uh, the terms of that fund, uh, it's, at its maximum, can only reach a million dollars. And we can only spend half a million dollars a year out of that fund if we have it. So the idea is to put some money away for projects, whether it be a building or a new playground uh, or something else that we don't have. And, and that's where this part of, the, part of the plan is to have the Strategic Planning Committee be actively involved in that process. Other questions about the uh, about the budget? Hey, okay. well, thank you. Uh, it's important that we have a level of interaction uh, because you know uh, some people have eureka moments later on. Um, hey, I wish I would have asked that. So, by all means, the board absolutely wants to continue to hear uh, information, questions, concerns. Uh, cer certainly via email, send that to information to us. Uh, <coughs> we are in a position to. Uh, you know, discuss at the board level again any refinements, anything that comes up out of these hearings or any other suggestions that come up. So uh, that feedback is important. Uh, I will tell you uh, from a personal perspective, I'm very comfortable with the budget. I know that our GM uh, did the budget creation from the bottom up. Uh, there was no such thing as a target assessment dollar that we wanted to get to. Uh, kudos to him and the team that, that did that and his department heads that, you know, started the budget from basically understanding what it is they needed to run their operation and went through from the bottom up and arrived uh, at an assessment that would meet those requirements. So, uh, again, I think it's really important that the uh, to understand that the, the, the level of effort that went into preparing the budget this year was was well. It made our job a lot easier. And this is from a personal perspective. I appreciate what everybody uh, on the OPA uh, staffing team has done to get us to this point. So. In closing, that's uh, that's it for the budget. Thanks for all your input. So we'll move on to the next. I will um, reinstate Robert's rules of order. The next item on our agenda is the drainage report. Colby. Come on. You have to, you have to be. You have to be on camera. <laughs> I don't know if I could do all three with this. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, the team has been working really hard on our drainage issues. As I know, it, it probably uh, impacts almost everyone in some way, shape, or form. And um, it's it's been a learning experience for me, for sure. I've learned a lot about drainage uh, over the last almost year. <coughs> Um, so I'm going to just go through a few things. I'm a recap of, of the, the goals. Um, but I wanted to start with uh, President Park said earlier about the team coming together. And, you know, in the in working with the drainage group, it's been amazing from the uh, ad hoc group that we have, the drainage team, the coastal base program the county, the commissioners, uh, the board, and the general manager, everybody has been on board and supportive of these efforts because everybody recognizes how bad it can be in some areas especially. So it's, it's, it's been a group effort. Um, as uh, President Park said earlier, we are applying for the Chesapeake and Coast Grant, which is a gateway proposal through the county. It'll be submitted February 14th. As we find out more information, if that <coughs> goes through, we'll release that information going forward. But we're really excited about those efforts going forward. Um, if you can see on the board, I know it's kind of small, but the completed pipe and drainage improvements that we've completed this fiscal year are the Boston Drive, we had uh, some failing culverts there. 
culverts are also pipes. I'm just putting that out there because I learned that myself. Um, Mumford's Landing Road, that's the one that we repaired uh, instead of fully replacing earlier in the fiscal year. Um, we're doing some work at Bluebill Court. They're really low, so we're raising some areas there. Right now, we're currently in the process of replacing the culvert and the catch basins at Watertown. Border links, if you've drawn, gone by there, they're also having their culverts replaced. And one of the uh, issues that co kept coming up are down near Harbor View Drive and Clipper Court. And there's not a culvert pipe there now, but in working with Vista, Rich is actually in the back. Put your hand up because you get the kudos that he, he's he's been uh, wonderful to work with, um, especially when you're working with an engineer who can explain things really well to you. But they went out and, and we're going to put a culvert, install one down there that will hopefully help improve some of the drainage. Nothing's going to fix it, but it's going to improve it. So let me go to the next slide. I just wanted to... Um, take some pictures to show you. The culvert on the left are from the original infrastructure of Ocean Pines. So it's hard to see from where you're seated, but where that shadow starts is actually completely gone and deteriorated. So throughout Ocean Pines, we have these rusty culvert pipes that were, you know, Ocean Pines is big, but it's really important to us to start replacing those and staying on top of those due to the fact that, one, they're rusty, and two, they're failing. Um, on the right is what we're replacing those with. It's an HDPE pipe. It's also a poly pipe. The good thing with these is they'll <coughs> last 50 plus years, and as you can see, we won't have the rust um, involved in that. So one of the things that the team has put together, and again, it's kind of hard to see, but we've started um, and almost completed a ditch and swale maintenance list. And this is established for every section in Ocean Pines. And what's highlighted is what has already been completed. This is just one page of many pages. But I just wanted to kind of give an example to show you what we're doing. And we're putting the date that we cleaned it or that a contractor came in if they have, if it's a larger ditch and we, you know, it needs a little bit more manpower. Um, and then that way, we're going to be able to keep them on a rotation to stay on top of that. So we'll be able to, these are, most of these are the, these are not the ditches in front of your home. These are the ditches that are beside your home, behind your home, the ones that get really full of the brush so that we can make sure that we can stay on top of those. We did a, a bunch this summer. We had a dry summer, so that was really good. We were able to get a lot done. And um, we've had some feedback that it definitely helped improve those areas, which is what we're trying to do. <coughs> so back in um, 1997, a long time ago, there was a study done. And sections two and three are deemed the worst areas in Ocean Pines. Now, just because I'm highlighting this area does not mean that we're not also looking at all other areas, especially ones that people bring to our attention. We are. This is just deemed the worst because it affects 761 lots and three parks. So approximately almost 10% of Ocean Pines. Now, all of this section drains <laughs> through uh, Bainbridge Pond down to Beecham Road. So this is a part of what our grant application is, is to improve this area. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I like the curtains. I like it. I didn't expect the curtains, but I like it. That was fun. <laughs> we wanted to make sure everybody was paying attention. Um, so our 2020 planned improvements, and again, it's hard for you to see. And if anyone wants a copy of this, I left some out, but I... I love the crowd, I didn't expect this many, um, is that we're going to be retrofitting Bainbridge Pond to meet the current MDE standards and improve the downstream swales at three of the road crossings to include uh, Beecham Road. We're, gonna, we're looking to add an additional culvert under Beecham Road. Back in the late 2000s, they added another one under there that's helped significantly, significantly in that area. <laughs> and we're looking to do a second one and possibly a third, but a second one to help increase the runoff uh, 
down there. Remove high points on the southern Beecham Road swale to allow trapped runoff. And we're, like I said, we're looking at possible offsite improvements. And the good thing also with this grant is that it's going to help with the water quality improvements. So not only are we looking to impact and help improve drainage, but in the process, we're working to also impact the water quality that's going out into our, our water. I have this back on a larger map back there too, if you wanna take a look later. But what's interesting about this is the yellow area up there, it's 391 lots or 115 acres, drains right to Bainbridge Pond. The green area is the additional drainage from Ocean Pines to Beecham Road, 233 acres or 370 lots. The red area is just the drainage captured and conveyed via the existing ditch there on Beecham Road. But all of that drains through the one culvert pipe under Beecham Road. So we're working to help get that flow out faster. And uh, like I said, hopefully improve that area. And as things go forward, um, we'll put more of this information out. So that's a picture of Bainbridge Pond. That also is back there if you want to look. Again, we're um, just looking to increase the water quality and outfall capacity with the wet retrofitting, improving the downstream of the swales and ditches there. The homes, it's hard to see, but if you look right to the left of the pond where the red line starts, those homes get really bombarded when that pond raises. So one of the things that... Um, Rich the, with Vista uh, had suggested, which is great, is to raise that road. Actually, we had in the thing raise dam road. So we were laughing. We we're like, raise the dam road. So kind of a little humor there. But um, <laughs> see, now I'm doing drainage humor. That's really bad. <laughs> but um, raise the road around the pond there to increase that pond storage, which will help those homes a lot. So we're really trying to to make sure that we're looking at all areas there. Um, this is a snap tight system. And <coughs> one of the things about this is that, and we're looking at this as a possibility, we need to um, replace the uh, drainage culverts on Cathal Road. This would allow us to do that without digging up the road, um, which also is more expensive to do if you dig up the road. And um, so this is a snap tight system um, that we're looking at a possible solution for some of our larger culverts so that it doesn't impact the traffic. It's also a little bit safer uh, to put together. And then the last thing I have, um, one of the things that the uh, ad hoc group had come up with when we met the drainage group was really putting that education out there. So we've been really trying to keep everybody educated in the community on drainage and things you can do, things we need to do. And we're gonna have a couple drainage seminars. Um, we have uh, Jennifer Dindinger. She is a watershed restoration specialist. She's gonna be coming on March 2nd here at the community center at six o'clock and she's gonna talk to everyone that's interested about yard waste and lawn fertilization. Uh, she's going to come back on April 20th at the same time, 6 o'clock, and all this will it'll be put out again if, if you need it, and do a hands-on seminar on making rain barrels and rain gardens. So she's actually going to have some of the material to teach those that are interested on how to do that. And then on May 12th, we have uh, Kevin Wagner with uh, uh, FEMA and Jessica Tate with the Emergency Management Group. And they're gonna be coming in with a couple other vendors here at the community center to talk about floodplain mapping, flood insurance, elevation certificates, low cost things that property owners can do, disaster, disaster risk, disaster risk reduction. And um, again, that's just to, it's interesting when you pull up the site to see how many people are actually really in Ocean Pines in the flood zone. But um, if anyone at any time has any questions about the drainage or um, concerns, you know, Ocean Pines is obviously very large and, and we try to get to everything that we can. Um, but please definitely reach out either to myself 
or uh, Eddie Wells, the public works director, and we can come out and meet with you and, and certainly discuss further. Um, but we're trying to get ahead of it so you don't have to call us. But that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Colby. Uh, next item on the agenda, the GM report. John? Okay, so we'll open up with the OP dashboard. Uh, basically here, we're just gonna talk about the number of customer service calls, number of customer service calls responded. Uh, the team has responded to all customer service calls over the last two months. The CPI vi violations, we monitor that. We're working through that and how many we've complied on, that have been complied on. The, the, the one to point out here, the number of work orders, we, we do have uh, work orders outstanding. Uh, it was more due to the holidays, some time off, and uh, the, the leaf pickup. But, but uh, I'm sure the team, and I know they're going to catch up from what they're telling me. Okay, so let's move right into um, the initiatives. So we have some major construction going on, approximately about three and a half million dollars. We'll give a quick report, I'll give a, a report on it. The clubhouse project completion date is the beginning of May, hopefully May 1st, 2020. Uh, it is on track. The, the estimated cost or the budget is 1.6 million. We had a meeting today on all this construction. And I think several members of this board, as well as myself and Steve, is that it's on track and definitely under budget. The last column, you can see how much we've paid so far. We did make some payments just recently this uh, week. The court and the clubhouse, um, we were able to add several items, you know, specifically a fireplace and a few items for the uh, kitchen, all within the budget uh, with money we saved and uh, uh, certain line items. Cart barn, uh, right on track, uh, maybe a week or two later than what we liked, uh, but it's basically should be completed within the week. The estimate for that, uh, the budget was around 400,000. We're coming in around 300, 310. Okay, have more numbers on that next month. Police building on track, really just starting, but there's a lot of progress going on there. Uh, the number is approximately 1.3 million, and uh, as of today's meeting, on track. The North Star software, a little bit to talk about there, and I have talked about it in the past. Um, we are generating our financials out of it. It is a highly customized software system for our needs here, as well as any software we would have to bring in. So there is work there. Uh, put together a work group to work on open items. Appreciate all the help from uh, members of the BNF committee, specifically Brian Reynolds, Jeff Nepper, and Doug is also helping on this. Doug has a lot of background on project planning and open items, and he's helping us put together the report and we'll have follow-ups with Northstar. Um, team, team has a very positive attitude, attitude, and I know we will be successful. I will continue to update the association on this. The budget, as you know, and we've talked about it today, it was posted, the uh, recommended bo uh, budget was posted on January 24th. So to talk about the budget, the, the recommended budget overview, where are we today? Well, we talked about it Thursday, December 19th. We delivered the budget binders <coughs> to the board and BNF. We prepared based upon BNF and board guidance, utilizing bottoms up approach. The BNF committee presentation was completed January 6th through the 8th. The board conducted a work session that took one day, one day, so we were able to achieve a lot in that one day. Last year, I believe it took a week. The GM published the recommended budget on January 24th. Next steps, well, tonight was one of them. Key, key dates, February 5th, board conducts hearing on recommended budget, and we did get some feedback that I know we'll be working on, specifically the bulkheads and dredging. February 11th, the treasurer and GM provide board with any final recommendations, February 7th through the 14th. Board provides GM with any motions to amend. GM will calculate, Steve will calculate, any assessment impact. February 18th, board hears final comments on the budget. Board considers any motions to amend and votes to adopt final budget. So those are the next key steps along the way. Next slide. Uh, some of us have read about this already in the dispatch or other papers. The county is exploring the Ocean Pines Golf Course irrigation 
uh, where possible situation where affluent water could be possibly sprayed. Um, it was, it is proposed using highly treated affluent irrigated water to the Ocean Pines Golf Course. County officials, as reported, did approach the GM in December for preliminary talks. The, Wor the Worcester County Commissioners approved a request from the advisory board to evaluate the project. In the local newspaper, the Dispatch County Public Works Director John Tustin said that the project would produce both practical and environmental benefits. Um, it's a pre preliminary evaluation. There are three golf courses that are utilizing this, this affluent water, Eagles Landing, River Run, and Glen Riddle. The project would require a new irrigation system for, for the golf course. The current golf irrigation system is more than 50 years old and would need to be replaced if we did something like this. Tustin, Tustin said the, the affluent nitrogen content would be at, at or below three milligrams per liter or three parts per million and phosphorus at or below one milligram per liter, one part per million. Very, very low, very good results for affluent water. It's highly treated affluent, refers to the water meeting current Bay restoration standards of the Maryland Department of the Environment. Where are we right now? Next step, the county's doing a feasibility study. Nothing has been decided, nothing's etched in stone. They are doing a feasibility study um, on this use of affluent water. Okay. So, would be treating the water? so the the water is treated at the um, at the treatments right that we have oh, right here. Fine. Correct. Yes, right off ninety. Okay, so um, time to look at our financials for the month of December. Um, just before I get into the numbers, I have mentioned we will begin reporting actual versus prior year end budget. I have been doing that, but uh, you know, we said once we get the North Star <coughs> system in, we'd like to you know, report versus prior year and the budget. It's, this is the way I always did it. Um, so let's give it a shot tonight. So for the month, you could see there was a decrease of 60.3 million, uh, 60, I knew I was gonna do that, 60,000 $60, <laughs> dollars. Um, from the prior year, I'm used to dealing in millions, and, and we were favorable <laughs> to the budget by 35,600. Okay, and we'll give you some detail on that. So the next slides are broken out by month, bro broken out by the amenities and the departments and broken all out, and it'll tie to the 60.3 and the 35.6. So if you look at the Yacht Club first, if you'll take the Yacht Club, the Beach Club, they're favorable to prior year. There was some timing to the budget of bonus accrual on how and when we calculated versus, versus the prior year. Um, and keep in mind, in mind for the budget, we are favorable, but we did budget based upon the contract to a $100,000 loss, which was similar to what we did last year. So bottom line, you'll see when I get to the year to date numbers, the Yacht Club and the Beach Club are doing very well compared to last year and the budget. All right, the Beach Parking is pretty much consistent. Uh, the marinas, uh, obviously, uh, timing, the overall picture for marina is doing well. Um, we had some good weather. The golf ops and, and maintenance, uh, we did recognize, as well documented, we did recognize the dues, the membership dues, earlier in the year. So you're going to have some differences when you look to prior year, when you go month to month. But then when I do the year to date, it pretty much balances out. <coughs> On the side, uh, more so on the maintenance side, we did have some wages and benefits um, that had increased. And on the operation side, other revenue went down. The merchandise sales went down with the, uh, the building, I guess, being closed, closed and operating out of a trailer. Outside of that, the rest of the revenue and everything at the golf ops was, was better than we thought. Turns Grill, um, Doing better than last year. When I show you the year-to-date numbers, it'll come full circle for you. Racket sports, uh, pickleball has been doing better. There were some uh, offsets from tennis, but pickleball is doing real well. Aquatics. When you look at aquatics last year, remember we recognized the deferred revenue, so that gave it a benefit last year. So this year um, might have had a little effect there, but that ultimately that will balance out. All righty, so that's the subtotal of the amenities. 
next page, you start off with the amenities subtotal. Reckon Park's doing well, and they've been doing well uh, consistently. Uh, there's 8,000 more in revenues. Special events did well. Fire EMS. Um, we had some timing last year. Uh, there were some vacancies. Uh, this year, more fully staffed. Talk about public works, general maintenance, and CPI. Um, last year, we had the renovations at the Yacht Club, right? So that was a big number this year, not, 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 not nothing near that. So that was the piece to the prior year. For the current year on the favorability, a lot of it has to do with the maintenance, and I'll talk more about that when I get to the year-to-date number. General admin, GM is pretty much uh, some timing, the, the Sipson payments, but basically, you know, pretty much in line. Finance and membership, same thing. There was some HRIT in this year for actual versus last year that they didn't have it. So again, there was some shifting of where we uh, charge certain expenses, but going forward, it would be consistent. Talk to the, let's talk to the year to date, and this certainly needs some talking too. So, if you look at the numbers in the, uh, the favorability columns, they're pretty big, but I do want to talk about the one to budget, the 623,000. So, and you know, I went through this in detail with the Budget and Finance uh, Committee, and just to talk about, before I get into the detail, there is, there is a number here in timing in the 623. Most of it is for maintenance. Um, with everything going on and, and all the construction and the team being spread, we had to adjust on when we we're going to do some of the maintenance. So there is a, a maintenance plan. There is a lot of maintenance that's going to go forward in the next three or four months. So that will affect the favorability to budget. Uh, also, we have some marketing expenses coming up. Um, again, timing as well as uh, for Turns Grill, there were some contract services that could possibly also hit in March, but I'll get it more in detail. But that 600000 is going to come down by a lot over the next four months. I just want to point that out. So at this time, we have committed to the budget favorability of approximately 250000 out of that 623, which we reflected in the recommended bu budget, reducing the recommended assessment by approximately $30. So we have recognized in the budget, it was a $30 savings for this year, taking it out of this, uh, what we believe will be a, uh, a favorable to budget. All right, so it is our first, um, the first place we go is to reduce that operating deficit. All righty, let's get into the detail. So again, we'll start with the Yacht Club. Um, Yacht Club doing very well, has been reported. A lot of it is they are in their second year. The margins are better, the revenue's better, the weather was better this year. Um, that management team up there, Mad Art, is operating on all cylinders and doing a great job. Beach parking, uh, same as, well, let me do the beach club. So the beach club, similar to what I said on the Yacht Club, same thing. The weather, second year of operations, uh, the, the management team up there just doing a great job. All right, margins better, revenue better. The beach parking. Um, I mean, there was a change in how we. Uh, hold on one second. Some things. That, there was a change with the parking only pass added revenue. That's pretty much. Yeah, that's the biggest one. So, and we'll talk more about beach parking. I'm sure in aquatics over the next couple of months. Uh, the marinas. Marinas had great weather. Uh, favorable uh, when the weather's good and you have, you know, d d I, I say it every month, I've been saying it for years, the management team up there, terrific, they benchmark, they know what they're doing, as well as everybody is doing, but they had a great year because of the weather. Golf ops, maintenance, um, if you look at the, uh, the favorability to the prior year, it's, it's you know, we, we recognize, as we know this year, the membership's up front, so obviously over the next couple of months, um, it won't be as much as in the past for the, uh, for the unfavorability to budget. It's mostly some sal salaries. We did bring in some service or some consultants. Uh, we were shorthanded. We had some situations that we corrected. And if anybody's been down there, they, they could see that it was corrected. There was a cost to it. Racket sports. 
basically pretty much, you know, pickleball's doing well. Um, I, I got here increased membership dues and some league fees, revenue. So a couple of other things uh, included there. Aquatics, well, the, 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 some of the changes with the beach parking, obviously the coupon card deferred revenue recognized last year affected the, uh, the <laughs> results there. But overall, moving in the right direction. So that's it for amenities, turn the page, recreation and parks, favorable to budget, 66,000. Wage favorability, there was, uh, like I mentioned, some revenue favorability. There was an open position there also. The fire EMS uh, compared to last year. Last year, as mentioned, there were vacancies. This year, there weren't as many, if any, just a few. The unfavorability to budget were some personal expenses. Public works, here's a big one that needs to be addressed. P public works, general maintenance, CPI. If you go over to the budget, you see that 200,000. When I opened up and I told you about the 600,000 favorability, uh, a lot of it had to do with the maintenance and the timing of the maintenance. We do have maintenance plans for that. We see that coming down over the next several months. Uh, last year, if you look at last year, we're favorable to last year. Again, the renovation at the Yacht Club, right? I think we did a lot of renovations last year that we didn't have to do this year. So that's a breakout there, that 200,000. That's why I'm saying we will not be favorable to 600,000 at the end of the year. Public relations, um, so favorable. Some of it was last year we did more promotional marketing than what we did this year. Uh, and that was all discussed. That was at a board level. That was BNF. That was everything. And uh, certainly we made the changes there. And then the six, the 6,000 versus budget is more timing. The general admin GM office, um, let me just go here because it's separate. When you look at the number to 623, if you do something like this, uh, 300,000 was assessment revenue. We had a forensic audit last year that cost us 175,000. We don't have that this year. Uh, we did have IT consulting and we had some legal, increased legal expenses that um, we don't have this year. As far as the 39.6 to, uh, to the budget, again, that was contract services. Finance membership, uh, mentioned it earlier with the month, I guess the IT uh, salaries or whatever was shifted into finance from general admin last year. Steve now has a department, he, he, it's where it should be. The favorability on the 56,000 to budget that needs to be noted. Um, Nice piece of it is a healthcare mix. Uh, it depends on the you know different employees and what they take for healthcare in their situation. There was some also over, over time was uh, reduced for the membership, and our supplies uh, were cut. That brings you to the six twenty three. Please keep in mind just the maintenance alone will bring that number down significantly, somewhere in that four hundred thousand number. Uh, we've committed to two fifty. Let's give the next four months a chance to see. Um, we usually drain on cash, and we don't have that much revenue coming in. So that and that'll bring us right into the forecasted forecasted results that we put together with the budget, which brought us in line where we figured we'd be somewhere around four hundred thousand favorable for the year. Okay, that's it. So hey, John. All right. The next item on the agenda is the treasurer's report, Larry. Yeah, before I get into it, um, there's several members of the Budget and Finance Committee team here. I'd ask them to stand, please. You guys want to stand up? And Steve Phillips, our Finance Director, I want to thank you guys for all your hard work. I know it's a lot of time. Thank you. Okay, ready to go, Michelle? Next slide. Okay, um, and as John said, you know, at these next four months, we'll be draining cash, so that's one of the things we're keeping a close eye on. Uh, overall, our laddered investments are still, as of December, we're still returning approximately 2.5%, uh, which is good. Um, the uh, association had approximately $12.1 million in cash. Uh, we have 6.8 invested in CDARs that are FDIC insured and approximately 5.3, earning about 2% in a money market that is also insured. 
reserves as of December uh, 2019. Um, we are uh, for replacement reserves after a 1.6 million spend. Uh, we're at uh, 5.6 bulkheads after 800,000 spend. We're 2.4 million roads. We're at 900,000, and um, so our total reserves as of uh, December 31st, 8.9 million. And the next slide. This is uh, uh, so. This is the forecast of where we're going to be at the end of the year. Uh, you can see all our the projects that we have listed. Uh, what we anticipate we're going to spend, maybe it'll be a little bit less because John's bringing these projects in um, uh, a little bit under budget. Uh, so we're anticipating uh, at uh, as of April 30th uh, of this year, 2020, uh, we should have $4.686 million left in reserves. Um, and that is after expenditures of about $7.2 million for all of our reserve accounts. Thank you, Larry. The uh, next item on the agenda is public comments. So with public comments, please state your name and your address. And the floor is now open for public comments. Me again. 65 would right. I've come representing one of the people representing the boat club. We have, I have to give you the history. Speaking can we pick her up with the microphone? I have go. to give you the history of uh, the cabinets. Many years ago in the old yacht club, the boat club of Ocean Pines had a display. The power squadron did not. When the new yacht club was built, my husband got a cabinet built for the boat club. At that time, the power squadron had a display in the administration building, in the front alcove there. We are asking now <coughs> why the Ocean City power squadron is getting their cabinet put back and the boat club, Ocean Pines boat club, is not when we were there first. And my other question is, what is our statements or uh, contract with Ott that they have the say of what goes in our yacht club? What does, is it true? There's two questions there. One was in regard to the display, and the second one was sort of a sub-question with regard to right. contractually. So uh, I had shared my uh, response because this issue came up, just so everybody realizes that uh, um, I wasn't there when the commitment was made by uh, the Matador company to uh, allow the power squadron. They had come to him and said, we want to hang our boat. I wasn't there. All I got to the point was MOC said, we're comfortable with it. We said, we're not comfortable with it. We don't want anybody to be represented at the yacht club, you know, as part of that operation. So we as a board agreed that that's the case. MOC at that time, Mat Matador, MOC, Matador company felt at that time that they had already made a commitment to the power squadron. So they felt that they had had to deliver on that. And we said, okay, fine, but you know what? No more, okay? They also said that they were concerned about the decor, all right? And that's part of their operational environment. So now we got the second request that said the boat club wanted to put their, in, put their information in there. We sent it over to Ralph and said, you know, just an FYI, this request is out on the floor. We're gonna say no because, you know, we, we said, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure that the decor in the Yacht Club is consistent with their operation and what they see as benefits to their operation. They were fine with it. They said, no, we don't want any more uh, displays in there. Okay, so contractually, I don't know, and I'll defer to our attorney, but there's nothing in there that says anything specific with regard to what you can hang on the walls, okay? However, it's inferred by the fact that they have the operational responsibility to run it in a business-like fashion gives them some leverage in how they want to run that environment. Okay, so I know that's a little bit of a nebulous answer, but we had made a commitment as a board to say we don't want anything else in that yacht club from anybody, whether it's a club, whether it's some special events, or so on and so forth, and the matter of company is behind us on that. I know but that's not the answer you wanted to hear. They're put, I'm right. sorry. Yeah, that's okay, go ahead. 
they're putting up their cabinet where ours was, and we are Ocean Pines. We're not Ocean City, and I think you should review your decisions. Uh, I, I, and I appreciate the input. Uh, one thing I will say on record is that uh, when we talked to MOC and we talked to the folks from the Power Squadron, because we had initially- I asked we, them long time let me, ago. Let me, let me finish. Okay. We, we, had, we had initially declined, okay, it's important to note, we declined to hang the uh, Power Squadron display up there. We said no, because we'd made a decision we don't want to supply any favoritism. Again, Matt Orr came back and said, well, we kind of told them that, you know, it was okay. So we begrudgingly said, that's that's fine, okay? Now, also, the other thing that was told by me when they were applying for it, that most of the folks in the Power Squadron are from Ocean Pines. Of right? course. All I right? know. I now, belong to the Power Squadron. So, 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 you know, again, I don't know whether that's relevant or not. I think the relevant <laughs> fact is we, we've taken the position publicly that we don't want anything else in that environment based on the operational requirements of there. And due to timing and, and, a, and, a, and a feeling that the matter our company felt like they owed it to uh, the power squadron because they did make a commitment when they were did, when they did the renovations. And like I said, that's, that's where we are today. So I, I, I'm, I'm well, not sure. I'll certainly defer to my board colleagues. If we want to bring this up again, I don't know that there's anything that would change that. Cause I quite frankly, I am concerned that if we set a precedent uh, who's to say that, um, and I'm not picking about the pickleball club, the bridge club, the, the golf members associate, you know, 25 different, you know, special interest groups will want to hang, displays all over the Yacht Club, which in turn takes away, I would argue, from the ambiance and the, and the operational um, you know, effectiveness that, that Matt Art Company has put into that environment to make it as successful as it is today. I know that's not the answer you wanted to hear, but I'm just trying to be very honest well, and open and about it. I'm asking you to review your decision. I, I, because and, those cabinets were $1,200 a piece. I, and and, and I, they're being, that power squadron one well, is being put up where ours was. Right. And, and so one of the other things that we may also want to consider is that, um, you know, is there another area? Frank, you and I, I think, we, you know, when we talked, we had this discussion, um, Frank suggested that, uh, you know, we get another area where we could invite the groups within Ocean Pines to display a cabin or to have some reasonably, you know, formatted display out there. So it's not that it'll never get hung up. It's just that- But it's the yacht club. It's the water yeah, and it's the I, boat you know, club. I, I understand. I understand. We certainly will revisit it. I'm not going to really promise anything. I'll defer to my board colleagues if we decide I'm to change our minds. to revisit it. Yeah. And I do appreciate you doing it. Thank you. All right. Thank I'd you. also like to say thank Kevin for John Viola. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. Public comments. Pat Marcassiello, 3B. Um, we also went to ORT, we also went to the general manager, we also went to the board and requested the boat club cabinet to be put up. We went to ORT as well. Why is the Ocean City Power Squadron getting it and not the Ocean Pines Boat Club? We are the Ocean Pines Boat Club. We have had a cabinet up showing our last 30 years almost. It's very important to us. Um, we were told that it would be rehung after the redecorating was done. And now it seems like everybody is going back on their word. Now, I don't know why the power squadron is getting it. Uh, it seems to me the Ocean City Power Squadron might wanna go to the Ocean City Yacht Club. We're the Ocean Pines Boat Club. We belong in the Ocean Pines Boat Club. As far as other organizations are concerned, we've had our, our, our cabinet on display for almost 30 years. Never has the Garden Club, the, the Women's Club, or anybody else ever discussed the fact even of having a cabinet hung. Uh, both of them, meaning the Power Squadron and the Boat Club, are nautical in theme. They belong in the Yacht Club. And why can't both of them go up? They were up in the Yacht Club before. Why can't both go up? There is room for both of them to go up. And they are both nautical, and no other organization has ever asked for it to be put up. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comments? Mark.
Margaret Giacopinello from 26 Federal Hill. Um, I'd like to thank you all. Whatever happened with the library, I am very satisfied with that. Um, I do have a question with um, the parking at the Beach Club and why it's, when I first came here 10 years ago, it was much less, well, it was less, and it included four passes. And then we went to another system and you got um, either your whole family, but there's only two of us, and my husband never goes to the beach. So we uh, opted for the, uh, it's not a gift card, but you know what I mean. You had a card that had money on it that you could spend at the okay, pools yeah. when my kids came. Uh, this year, as I understand it, it's going to be $185, which is only $25 less than last year, if I'm correct. And there will be no 180 all right, so $30 less than last year, and no passes whatsoever of any kind. Um, is there a reason why it's gone up so much? Well, you know, Larry, you look like you wanted to say something. I mean, I, I'm, I'm fielding all the questions. I don't mind fielding take, all the questions, but if you wanted to step in, by all means, please. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things that we're trying to do here in Ocean Pines um, is to sort through our finances. And uh, one of the issues is looking at each area to determine whether or not there is profitability or not. Um, and that means aquatics. Okay. So the beach club parking has been subsidizing a part uh, a parking has been subsidizing aquatics for some time with the theory that uh, people buy the, the pool parking pass, uh, the, par the beach parking pass, and use the pools. Um, the, again, uh, it, it doesn't give us a true understanding of whether or not we are charging the correct amount in aquatics and whether or not it is an amenity that is breaking even. We're not looking to make a profit on them. We're oh, looking to break even. So I think that when we had these discussions preliminarily for this budget, that was a policy decision that we looked at um, with uh, the our new computer system coming in um, and that the trying to uh, customize all the different plans that we have for everything gets expensive with putting the system in and it gets cumbersome with the, the system. Um, but in addition to that, we're trying to determine uh, what our, whether or not we're profitable or breaking even or not. So that's, I mean, that was the thought process when we had this discussion during the budget. Hearing. Okay. I mean, I understand you have to balance the budget. On the other hand, if the parking subsidizes aquatics, now we're subsidi subsidizing it even more because we're going to have to pay $180 plus every time we go to use the pool, we'd have to pay separately. Yeah, you would be paying to use the pool. That's correct. But, but the parking would not be subsidizing because the, the combination of the pass was... $215 last year. Something like that. Yeah, it was $215. And now we're reducing the parking. So $35, but you gave me how many, how much money? I don't know. I understand. Some and, are dollars. And in. that's, and that's where the issue comes in because we're, we can't, it's, it doesn't give us a true reading on whether or not aquatics is, we're properly charging what we should be for aquatics and whether or not it's actually profitable or, or at the break-even point where we, we are supposed to be. So this would be re revisited after this year and you... Well, we, yeah, this is, this is the first year we're going to do it this way. And yeah, we're going to be looking at, uh, again, as we move forward, we're evaluating all of our amenities and all of our operations for this type of uh, this type of item, we're trying we're trying from a financial and accounting standpoint to bring the association to where they should be. Okay, thank and you. Can just let me add one thing. I want to point out one of the things that Larry mentioned. We're trying to simplify, you know, our finances for better accountability. All right. One of the things we found in the you know in the forensic study of byproduct is you know the accounting practices you know needed to be 
you know, kind of tightened up. Okay, so allocation of funding across different accounts, really, while not illegal or anything like that, certainly is done because at the end of the day, you're just looking at the entire budget rather than departmentally across different operating units. But uh, this was an, uh, this was the attempt, and again, this was discussed with the work group, and they sort of said, okay, listen, you got parking and you got pool passes, so they should be treated differently because it's a different activity associated with you know with those two entities. The idea, at least what I heard from the group, was. Because you park in the beach club doesn't automatically mean you're going to swim in, in, in the beach club pool, right? So, you know, you could go to the beach club, go to the beach. You can go to the right. beach club, go to lunch and go home. So they wanted to kind of break, basically break it apart and make it more simple. So I think that's the other part of it, too, is it really, and as Larry said, the it, it gives you a truer picture of the operational aspects of aquatics to make sure that going forward, you're not just subsidizing because you have money over here that came out of beach parking, but you're actually looking at the operational environment and what do you need to do to improve it? All right. What's the trend? Is it poor is it poor membership? People are no longer participating? Is it higher cost to maintain? But you got to do that analysis. And this allows us to do that without just covering it up by saying, we'll just take money out of this pile, put it over here. Oh, we're profit. We look good. Well then you don't have any operational efficiencies that you're worried about. So anyway, I, I hope that explains your somewhat, yes. Okay. And, and, and just one more comment. So so I I'm hearing in the back of my head when I talk to myself that <laughs> those people in aquatics are saying, oh, my God, we're going to be paying $20 a pool visit. And that's not the intent. The, because we, as, a, as an association, we do look at the amenities as a whole. So if the, if the results in aquatics aren't um, breaking even, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to raise the rates to get it to break even. It means that we're, you know, we want to get a better idea of what it's actually costing us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comments? Paul DeLong of Seven Morning Mist Drive. Um, I got a couple issues here. I put a lot of money in my home since uh, eight years now. And the homes that are around me, it's quite a few. Uh, people don't live there. They don't even come there. And their homes are really, really depreciating my home, in my opinion. All right, and nothing's being done. There's uh, campers all over the place that I didn't think that were allowed in here permanently. You're allowed to have them, what is it, two weeks? And you got to get them out and you can come bring them back, but you can't leave them permanently. Is that correct or not? Okay. Because um, I have a big motor home and it was in my driveway and I got a nasty letter, picture and everything sent to me. And I says, okay, that's all right. I'll get rid of it. I wasn't keeping it there. It was there to do the maintenance I had to do on it. But I'm looking at a lot of other things going on, and it's not being maintained. Uh, I have a friend down the street from me. He was renting the house, and we were talking, and I don't know the guy. And he said, I will not buy in this association because he went around and is seeing the deterioration of our association. That's bad. That is really, really bad. And we have a beautiful community, but the only way you're going to keep it is if you go around and say, hey, look, out. I got to go buy it. Why don't everybody else got to go buy it? It's not fair. It's not fair. And it, it, it's just, I seen a tractor trailer by a guy's house. I didn't think they were allowed in here. It's not a motor home or a boat. I mean, it's sitting there by his house for three or four days. Now, that's what he does for a living. But, you know, come on, people. And I, all I hear is that, well, we don't have enough manpower to go around and see all this stuff. I complained about a couple campers because, hey, it's not fair. If it's fair for them, then it's fair for me. All right? You know, yep. come on, gentlemen and ladies. We got a beautiful place. Let's keep it that way. You don't want your home to go down in value. We want it to go up. So let's uh, get it together here. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the comment. 
It, what was your address again? Yeah, I was going to say, is there... Seven, seven more in this slide. wonder, is it, John, is this something we could follow up on to see if there's any open CPI violations that have been reported in that area? <clears throat> and then, you know, maybe if they haven't been reported, then maybe I'd ask if, if you wouldn't mind if you could point that out to us and make sure... Okay. All right. So let's see if there's been any reports, CPI violation reports for the area the gentleman chatted about, and we'll see if we can follow up accordingly. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. No, your point is well taken. No, no, very good. No, it's a very positive comment. I have no issue whatsoever. We'll try to follow up as much as possible. Too much stuff going on right now, and I'm saying, well, I got hit how many times? I mean, when I was, I added on to my own, and let me tell you, I mean, I sent me. Nasty letters saying my house was a fire action, <laughs> but yet for eight years prior to me buying a home, my yard had that high of leaves throughout the yard. I got nails at a fire hazard. I'm saying, me? I mean, Understood. thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. All right, other public comments? Seeing none, I'll close the floor for public comments and move on to the next item on our agenda. On his capital purchase requests, John. So the first one, sorry. So the first one is Aquatics replace shingles on roof at Sports Corp pool above the lobby and the bathroom. Uh, recommending Dave Dunn contractors. Price is sixteen thousand four seventy five. It is in the budget. It's a replacement. I don't entertain a motion to approve the replacement of shingles on the roof at the sports core pool. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Discussion. And then I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the request for replacement shingles on the roof of the sports core pool? Please aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? Noted accordingly. Next item. Okay. Next item on the list is golf clubhouse audio system. Qualifies as replacement. We do have a system down here now. Um, we are looking at Mid-South Audio. Uh, they are not the lowest bidder, but they are the recommended bidder from the, uh, the, the work group that we had and the experts that we brought in. Uh, their hardware is top of the line. It's proven. They're a proven supplier. Um, and that, that's why that one's recommended. The, the, the next bidder did not actually include all of the installation and certain types of items that we did request. So it's Mid-South. We've already proven them with the community center. 32,893.81 replacement. I'll entertain a motion to accept the request for the golf clubhouse audio system. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Come. All right. So, I got. I talked to Josh about this just a little bit, and I I do have a question. I have a quick one because it seems to me, when I'm looking at this proposal, there's a twelve thousand dollar difference in cost for this thing, and it's all because they're installing. They're going to install the audio equipment, or I mean the uh, the video and screen. Did we ask the other company to add that to their bid, or did they just they just don't do that work? The twenty thousand dollar bid. Does he not do that? Can I? Can you can answer? I'm assuming. I mean, I, it just seems to me like I understand that they did everything in here and they did good work, but I don't know. I, I just twelve thousand dollars is a lot of price for something that that seems to be not necessarily apples to apples, but but, you know, red apples to green apples are still apples. You know what I mean? Uh, it just seems like a ton of money for. He's putting in HDMI cables, and this guy's putting in coax cables. From what I can see, I just don't understand where that extra that that extra twelve grand is going. We're putting in the same amount of speakers, um, and we're putting in just about everything. The only thing he's not putting in is a is a screen and video capability equipment, which I don't know. You know, I, well, I'm assuming we're purchasing the we're purchasing the screen and the and the the um, projector because I don't see it in this thing anywhere. So there's my question. Um, we think it's better equipment, and they're, they're a company that we know, and they have a proven track record, and uh, you know, we trust them. We had an issue today, actually, and we had them here in a half an hour to take care of it. So, so 
And then I, and, and, and um, Tom and I did anticipate, and Josh will tell you that I knew this, this question would come up and I asked Josh, I mean, we can go, if you want, go item by item. The bottom line is this, Mid-South, their, their equipment that you're using, I'm being told, is of higher quality. Um, if you want, we'd have to go through and detail this, this situation. We did have situations here where um, the audio and the vi video were not good. This company came in and they're proven. I brought in people who I knew were experts in the field, worked with Josh, worked with us. This is what they're telling us to go with. Um, <laughs> you know, if you constantly go with the lower bidder, sometimes you got to understand you're getting the quality, you're getting the proven that you know it's going to work. Outside of that, I don't know what else to say. Okay, I mean, I don't look. This, this is all. Yeah, no, to no, me. it's a legit question. What, Believe me, I had it also. I don't we know can what a QSC detail core one hundred and ten is from my right leg. Right. I have no idea. Right. You know? But I'm looking at it, going there's that's, that's twelve thousand dollars, a substantial amount of money. So this better be some gold plated equipment if that's what the case is going to be, and they better be running it for me every time I go to the country club and want to watch TV. So anyway, that was just my concern. I just wanted yeah, to get no, it I out there, and I, legit. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. it's legit. The discussion. Now I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the request for the golf clubhouse audio system, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Okay. Next item, John. Okay, so similar again, the Yacht Club ballroom audio system. It qualifies as replacement. Again, uh, not we're coming forward not with the lowest bidder. Mid-South Audio, the same supplier. Um, do have a little more to add here to definitely answer the legit question about why it, it's it's uh, we're not going with the lower bidder. Um, the the, the Shore Home Solutions uh, we felt was not a viable solution. They gave us a price basically going in and putting the speakers in the exact same situation, same place as the current speakers, and that was determined by our experts and our work group that that was part of the problem was where that uh, those speakers were located. Um, that was a big part of it, as well as, again, they recommend Mid-South. They've, they've done the work, they're proven. And um, that's the information I got on it. And honestly, I would go with Mid-South, but what say you? All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, request for the Yacht Club audio system. I said, I'll entertain a motion. Okay, I know you're ready to discuss this. Make sure we follow parliamentary procedures. I'll entertain a motion. Maryland played last night. So, all right, let's get back to the quorum, please. Entertain a motion to approve the request for the Yacht Club audio system. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. <laughs> All right. Now, this was a little different. I mean, I still have no idea what a QSC Core 110 Unified Core 24 audio, I, I have no idea what that crap is. But what I do know is that basically the, the scope of work is the exact same scope of work that's at the golf course. And we're what we're doing, it, I mean, it's, but I have no idea how many speakers they're putting in at the Yacht Club. I don't have any idea how many, it's not in here anywhere. None of the none of the stuff that they you say are putting speakers in different places. You say they're putting speakers more speakers, less speakers. I don't know. I know the other one. He's putting he was putting four more three way speakers on the walls to give a different sound core and newer and upgraded speakers up top. This one they basically I have the same exact description. Putting nine ceiling speakers in the restaurant, it's nine ceiling speakers in the meeting room and 18 ceiling speakers through the rest of the building and outdoor speakers for the golf cart staging area. Now, I don't think we have a golf cart staging area at the Yacht Club. So I have a little problem that with just, the, with, the what's that? No, it's not, it's, it's, the, it's completely different. It's what you gave me with this, I'm not being a jerk. It's the, unless, the, unless I just got the wrong page, but this is different than this. There's the same page. There's the two pages. I got, they both say golf. Yes, I got I got quote 3757 and 3751, and they both have the same paragraph up top. That's all. I'm, I mean, it's just to me, I can't approve it because I don't really have any idea how many speakers they're putting at the yacht club and what they're doing to the yacht club. You say it's greater, and I believe you because I trust you. But unless it's in my contract, I'm not approving what's in the contract. Oh, and that's I'm not I'm not passing the blame or anything. I'm just saying when I read through this earlier, 
I noticed that there was no idea of what's going into the yacht club at all. So. Yeah, and, and that's legit. I mean, that's why we give out the packages before so that if there is something you can ask and then obviously we can come in. Um, yeah, we'll go back and get it. I mean, what can I tell you? Uh, yeah. Tom, good good catch. Actually, if you look at the at quote 3757, uh, the very top, it says, same conditions apply as quote 3747. All right. So I'm, I'm wondering if it was just an administrative error. You know, they, they did a cut and paste. Yeah, my, my guess is that I'm pretty sure they used the theory of minimum effort and just said, I'll, you know, just before slap I, that in there and it's good I to go. It, but but, but your in. point is well taken, and I appreciate you pointing that out. Colette, you would. I was just going to propose that we uh, table the amendment, maybe, or the motion, and maybe vote by email after we get the detail. All right. So there's a proposed very friendly amendment to uh, table the motion. Until we second. get the additional detail associated with this particular quote. Is there a second, second to that? Mm -hmm. All right. Any discussion? Yeah, if we could, I mean, if you can get this cleaned up, we can do it by email. I have no problem with doing that as long as I can see what we're getting for the price that we're getting it. That's, that's, you know, because I, I believe that you trust them and they did this job in here. And obviously it works well because people can hear it. Um, so, yeah, and I'll hear from my father tomorrow or if he can hear me and see me. So I'll let you know then whether we're going to approve this. All right. Any other discussion on the friendly amendment to uh, wait until we get uh, the table of motion, wait until we get the additional details? Seeing now to call the question, I was in favor of the friendly amendment to table the motion. Until we get additional details regarding the quote, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. All right. So that supersedes the existing motion. Therefore, we can move on to the next item. Uh, that will be. Uh, and just to point out to the public, we do have the option, uh, if every director is uh, unanimous, unanimous in their consent to vote via electronic means rather than at a board meeting, we have that option. The option to vote electronically must be unanimous, all right? And so if one director decides that he or she does not want to vote via email, they have that authority, and we'd have to push it back to the next meeting. Not a problem. I just want to make sure that everybody aware is aware that we have that option, and we have used it in the past. Obviously, we had that in the minutes from uh, earlier in the meeting today. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. There are no more, uh, there are no more uh, capital purchase requests. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda. That's CPI violations. Uh, John? Okay. So, and we will report these for tonight. Um, the first one is three Lord Guy Terrace debris there's pictures uh we've looked at it where you can see the timeline what's been done different letters sent we're uh requesting to send to the opa attorney for action thank you i'll entertain a motion to find three lord guide terrace in continuing violation I'll move. is there a second second any discussion yes frank hey uh, john more of a question than the discussion this kind of bridges the old policy versus the new policy, right? So with the new policy, <laughs> the board doesn't have to do anything. John is authorized to go to the attorney after 30 days. So first, Frank, I, I totally agree with you. We actually, I had Michelle talk to Doug. Yeah, we, um, we said, I guess there's some finalizing to do on it or whatever. So we were just gonna do this for now. Um, but I totally agree with you, Frank, and I said that when I received this, that I didn't have to, but I guess we're just, the timing with MO one or some addendums or whatever that we're still seeing emails on, but otherwise I totally agree with you. So, so to make things clear, in the last meeting, we approved M01, but there was an administrative error with regard to one of the, uh, the addendums, okay? They had an addendum in A and B, and uh, thanks to Jim Trommel, uh, who is the head of the Bylaws and Resolutions Committee, he pointed out that administrative oversight. All right. So we didn't have time to redo that. We already agreed that M01 is going to move forward. But so we, we to do diligence is we have to make sure that we memorialize and record the fact that we notice the administrative error, we'll correct it and vote on it again. OK, so rather than get ahead of ourselves and say, we're eventually going to get to the point where John has the GM has the authority to do so. But technically, we're not there yet because we haven't finalized. We haven't passed the uh, corrected version of M01 as noted by our bylaws and resolutions committee. So I'm just being very risk averse here by having John report it to the board. Uh, and I think Frank brings up a good point. Going forward, he won't, because of the new changes we made to M01, that he won't have to take this particular issue to the board anymore because he'll be operating under the tenets of 
Resolution M01. So does everybody understand that? It's uh, it's just I'm being very risk averse here to make sure we still report it, and then we still have some homework to do based on, thankfully, the uh, review that uh, Jim Trumbull pointed out to us with regard to the administrative oversight. So any other any other questions on this one? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of finding um, uh, three Lord Guy Terrace and continuing uh, violation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thanks. Next one. Okay, um, 84 Sandy Hook Road, pergola, no permit is the violation. Again, there's a timeline, all the detailed letters. See pictures of it. Request send to OPA attorney for action, requesting from the board. And I'll entertain a motion to find 84 Sandy Hook and continuing <laughs> violation. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of finding 84 Sandy Hook and continuing violations, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. That's it for CPI violations. Next item on the agenda, unfinished business. Second reading of resolution M06. Steve. Okay. This is uh, uh, M06 has been revised by the Ocean Pines Election Advisory Committee to clarify two. Sorry. To this is uh, Related to resolution M06, which is prepared by our uh, elections advisory committee, uh, clarifying uh, what constitutes validation of election results and to allow the candidate forum moderator to ask questions in a random order. Um, just from background, there's been a question raised as to when and how our election results are validated. The revision addresses that question. The page numbers in that motion uh, are incorrect. So you should all have a copy of M06, and actually it's on page nine, uh, attachment A, 9E. The um, one thing that we did change is we are not live streaming the vote counting process anymore. So we took out the uh, reference to live streaming. Uh, page nine, uh, nine and 10, 11A, explains the validation is uh, is accomplished when the vote results are presented to the board at an annual meeting. If the annual meeting is not held, then the results are validated when they're presented uh, to the board at a special meeting. The other changes are in attachment C. There was a question in the first reading about the seating order. We, we've reestablished that the candidates will be seated at the uh, at forums in the same order as they appear on the ballot. So that's been straightened out. That shows up in two places. And then it provides uh, the opportunity for the uh, moderator of the forum to ask questions in random order. So those are the, the changes that were made. Uh, we did have a meeting last week with Jim Trummel and some other people and went through this document uh, line by line and cleaned up typos and edit edited the document, so I think it's in real good shape now. All right, so as the item is a discussion topic, do we have any questions for Steve or anybody else regarding the uh, changes that were made to uh, uh, M06 between the first reading and the second reading? And none, I'll entertain a motion to accept the changes from the second reading of M06 to uh, approve this current version of M06. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of accepting the second reading as the final version for resolution M06, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. That's the last item under unfinished business. We'll move into new business. First item is discussion for earmarking projects for new capital reserve fund. Colette. Yes. Um, let's see. The topic is process for earmarking projects for the new capital reserve fund. Um, when the authority for us to establish a new capital fund was approved by the board. There was no decision as to how to ensure that future spending on capital items or projects earmarked for funding through the new capital reserve fund would actually be authorized. Background, during the November 2, 2019 regular meeting, the board approved provisions to resolution F03 to include the new capital reserve fund. During the current board budget hearing, the concern arose regarding how to ensure that new capital items or projects that are used to justify accumulation of funds for the new capital reserve fund are approved to be expensed <coughs> in a future budget cycle. 
after the funds necessary to cover them are accumulated. It has been proposed that such projects be approved, sorry, proved via motion for them to be approved for inclusion in a future budget pending accumulation of the necessary funds in the capital reserve fund. This discussion topic is meant to provide the board the opportunity to consider options for ensuring that the new capital projects um, actually are approved for completion in a subsequent budget cycle. The concern being that during one budget cycle, there are seven members sitting up here, and in the next budget cycle, there may be two or three different people sitting up here. So we want to make sure that a project that's approved doesn't get lost or doesn't get reversed by a future board. So it's a bit of a dilemma we need to kind of figure out how to address. Sorry about the mic issue. Josh is not on me tough enough on this mic. <laughs> So this is a uh, discussion item for the board, so uh, entertain any additional questions, concerns, other uh, points of interest regarding this topic? Nick? Okay, this kind of ties into the earlier discussion on strategic planning. Uh, and, and I guess I'd frame it this way. The reality of the situation is, I think for the last year, the last budget, two budget processes, certainly since John has been sitting in that chair, we have been engaged in a process of taking spaghetti and stringing it out in straight lines so it makes sense, okay? And it's all over. I mean, it's things that are visible and things that are invisible. One of the things when Larry brought the new capital reserve fund that I think was implicit in the discussion or in the thought process was that we would have a strategic plan, which in fact, John and the team is working on. When a strategic plan comes into place, okay, it will have capital items in it that the vo board will vote on. When the board votes on that, the way that I understand the new capital motion is that is then there'll be a second vote to move money from the reserve fund over to the new capital fund to cover those projects up to 10%. As it, and as it stands now, Frank, those discussions take place during the budget process. So, for example, this room that we've talked about for the sports core, um, if the budget is, a, if it's approved in the budget, then it's approved to make the actual spend, to spend the dollars, it has to come to the board to make it. <coughs> yeah, I, I think, right? you know, the going back, and if you recall my, I don't call them just concerns, but I guess they were, is the fact that I, I like the idea of a capital fund. Uh, but we have to have the absolute proper controls over that. And you've heard me say before, any four directors can decide they want to build a bowling alley, okay? And it's just not the intent of that capital. I like the idea of tying uh, these spending uh, initiatives to a strategic plan, all right? I think what we need to do is either create it as a policy. Uh, I think we need – so in other words, what I'd be interested in everybody's opinion on what mechanism do we use – to make sure that we are addressing the proper authority for how to uh, select a project, <laughs> how to transfer monies, you know, into the capital reserve fund, and how to approve expenditures. Okay, so I think one of the other things we've got some homework to do, and that is, you know, what can we do to put it in place? If it's just a, a policy, okay, you know, should it be in the F uh, F resolutions for finance? Maybe we look at creating something along those lines. Uh, but I think I would be much more comfortable if we had. A very succinct and solid, you know, reference that says, here's how we have committed from our, you know, governance documents to move the money, to identify the projects, and to spend the money. And until that happens, I'm very uncomfortable. We can say what we want, but you know what? Two days from now, you know, some of us aren't here anymore. And, you know, somebody says, I want to build a bowling alley. And I talked to four of my buddies who want to improve their average. So, therefore, we're going to do that. <laughs> okay. We, we've identified so, the method to move the money. That's what the right. new capital fund is. We're okay with that. We're okay with that. Right. Um, and I think uh, and uh, when Jim and I sat down and talked about this, we talked about um, trying to put some additional parameters around this, the process, uh, in, uh, in FO2. And we didn't think it was 
uh, viable. So I agree. We need to find another way to do it. Um, I guess, I guess my my thought or vision on this thing was that any project or I guess I would say project because not every project should go to my my thought was that if we were going to do a project such as this building at the sports core that whoever bring whoever brings it up whether it be a board member or um, a community member or the strategic planning committee that it go to the committee to provide feedback to us and let the them tell, planning the strategic planning committee okay uh, and regardless of who brings it up um, and uh, and then you know we can move from there the issue is I, I want to make sure everybody understands that this it it real it really wasn't my main objective to be putting establishing this account to put a lot of money in there so we can do gigantic projects. That's really not what, what this is really for. This, this is really designed to do smaller level projects or purchases <clears throat> that are new so that they don't have a direct impact on the assessment. Therefore, as has happened in the past, it didn't get done or the purchases didn't get made. So I know we talk about big projects and stuff. That's really not what, what the intent here is. But I agree. We need to put some, get, get a little more process behind it. Larry, uh, okay, you're, Tom, you're next, and then Frank. So, Larry, one question. I want to make sure I heard you correctly. You said when you spoke with Jim Trommel regarding putting some policy in our F resolutions that he was didn't think that was the right spot for yeah, it. We talked about that, and, and he didn't think it was the right place to go because then what it does, because of the – <clears throat> because it would tie us down to exact compliance. I don't have a problem with that. Well, I, I think I think the way that the thing will would operate, it, it could create problems. This is my right. opinion. Well, this is a discussion I had. Uh, Tom, <coughs> Frank. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's there. The tools are there because a prior board, long before a number of us were seated, passed a resolution that defines the strategic planning process. And what that process basically says, and it creates a, a committee different than almost any other committee in a unique way, in that that committee is a resource group for the general manager to use in writing the strategic plan. It also specifically says that the current year, like if we were talking, you know, this fiscal year coming up, that the plan is 100 percent for year two it's 85 percent for year three i think it's 75 percent and in year four and five it's 50 percent so if we just passed looked at that resolution looked at the new capital and said look the strategic plan should be part of the budgeting process we got it steve and then Colette. yeah i just think that we're probably not going to be able to resolve this tonight as a board. I would suggest we get a small work group together, let Larry lead it, and come up with a, a set of policies or procedures and bring it back to the board for consideration. But, okay, yeah, great idea. I mean, again, this was a discussion. Again, one of the reasons we want to have these kinds of discussions in public so that the, you know, the membership understands what we're thinking about. And, you know, when we arrive at a decision, we want to make sure that we've got the right amount of information before we move forward. So uh, thank you. Unless there's any more comments, we'll close this particular item on the uh, on the agenda and move on to the next item. Uh, and that is a motion um, up here. Um, that is a motion to establish a 6% interest rate for delinquent fees for fiscal 2021 budget. The purpose and effect is the establishment of an interest rate for delinquent fees is required in Section 12D of the Declarations of Restriction. In the background is this action is required on an annual basis per our governing documents. Is there a second? So moved. Discussion. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried unanimously. It would be a 6% interest rate. Very good. Next item on the agenda is a motion to approve the lease agreement for the craft club. Larry. 
Uh, this is a motion to approve the lease agreement for the craft building by the Crioneers Craft Club and Ocean Pines at a rate of $3,300 a year. Um, the uh, uh, number is based on $2,900 a year depreciation and utilities. Uh, and again, based on uh, the motion was previously passed by this board, that number would be reduced by the donations made by the Ocean Pine or two Ocean Pines by the Pioneers Craft Club. Uh, purpose and effect it's to enter into this lease agreement is a 10 year lease agreement uh, has been reviewed by our attorney and it's ready to be signed. Is there a second? Second. So, second. Discussion. Um, I had a question from a member of the craft club. Um, these donations to OPA, does that include the um, memorial, the no. veterans memorial? No, okay. they are, the, it would not include, they've been making donations to the library, but that is a Worcester County organization and the um, uh, veterans or the uh, uh, memorial is also a Worcester County organization. Uh, uh, Operation, so it it would not include those. Thank you. Uh, so to be clear, Colette, since I made the motion to create this, here's the idea behind it. Um, there was a discussion that this is a unique situation because we're giving a building, in essence, to a club that's not part of OPA. However, they're inherent in the fabric of the community. They've been here a long time. They've contributed a lot. The thinking was. <laughs> In building the building, if we get a rent, and this I think complies with it, to offset the depreciation or to re give us a return greater than the latter rate of return, then why not have a building for that purpose because the money would just be sitting there and we're getting more from it. So, and then the way the donation is calculated, they've given things like defibrillators, okay? I mean, every building in Ocean Pines should have a defibrillator. If it doesn't have one and they give it as a gift, the way that I look at it is that's something that comes from our assessment that we'd pay for because it should be there. So that's the kind of rationale that was behind it. And then looking at the donations, that's the kind of donations that they've made. So they can still contribute to the library and the Veterans Memorial. It's just not deducted from their rent. Larry. Yeah, and I can, I can tell you, um, uh, and my wife has just taken – the position as vice president of the Pioneers Craft Club. But uh, they I know they intend to continue to make those contributions. But for anyone who doesn't understand, uh, this organization has contributed over $150,000 back to the community over the um, probably the last 10 to 15 years. So they've made uh, uh, large contributions back to Ocean Pines. And, and Frank's exactly right. If they didn't do it, we would be doing it. Other discussion. Real quick, um, who's going to be in charge of um of of, of making the verifying the deduction by the landlord? They're they're going to provide. They provide us a sheet. They'll the provide the information. Yeah. Okay. To, to, I mean, I don't uh, the see the general that they manager can't. or Steve. Yeah. Okay. I don't see that they couldn't do thirty three hundred dollars probably in the first month. But <laughs> just saying. The discussion. You know, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion to approve the lease agreement, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, that's it for um, new business. Uh, next item on the agenda is appointments. I'll ask the board's indulgence, uh, unless there's any specific folks that we want to talk about, I'd ask for a sec uh, an acceptance of all the names listed, and I'll read them. Uh, John Reeves, First Term Aquatics. Ellen Hinch, First Term Aquatics. Kim Meekins, First Term Aquatics. Paul Fawner, Second Term Environment and Natural Assets. John Maziak, First Term Environment and Natural Assets, Steve Cohen, Chair of Recreation and Parks, uh, Mary Cordry, First Term Recreation and Parks, John Bassard, First Term Recreation and Parks, Kathy Gottesman, First Term Recreation and Parks, Laura Charlie, First Term Recreation and Parks, and uh, this item was added at the beginning of the meeting, Carol, Lug Carol Ludwig, First Term Elections. I'll entertain a motion to accept all of those appointments. Moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Just a question. Thank you. One of the applications has on the bottom renter in his son's home. I thought to be a member of a committee, you had to be an owner of an association. Yeah, you do. You do Thank you, Frank. Me. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay. Which one is that? John Broussard. Okay. 
Very good kiss. Thank you, Frank. All right. Well, then, uh, per the uh, uh, bylaws, that uh, he will be, um, while, the, while we appreciate his willingness to volunteer, based on our governance document, he can't. So, therefore, we'll remove that item, that individual from the list. Um, so, I will uh, entertain a motion to accept all the appointments except for the one from John Bussard. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Any other questions? You know, I don't see none. I'll call the question. All those in favor of uh, the appointments minus uh, the individual John Bussard based on the discussion we just had. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. The next item is I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Thank you, everyone.